Make sure you download the Woodward Sports app in the App Store and the Google Play Store today. Take Woodward Sports with you wherever you go and listen live on your phone or mobile device. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I, I guess how you it's, doing, Jeff? I guess it's Monday. How, it, are you, how are you doing? It is an excellent morning. And, and seeing you smoke those cigars, baby, it's <laughs> celebratory event. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Good morning, America. Good morning, Michigan. Good morning, everybody. How are you doing this morning? I'll tell you how I'm doing. I'm doing fantastic. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, that's fucking delicious, by the way. Justin, I'm sorry in advance. I have one thing to say. One thing. <laughs> Matthew fucking Stafford, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning, man. I God. <sighs> <laughs> great. Oh my goodness. Oh yes. Brought to you by. I picked this out from Target myself. California roots. Yes, the pun was absolutely intended this morning. But I can't forget about gypsy vodka. So we get vodka today. We get rosé. Oh God. Where do I start? <laughs> oh my god! How about that? How about that? Oh, I'll start with my first quote of the day. Let's see Stafford throw more than 17 times against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers! Alright, buddy! 28 of 38, 366 yards, two touchdowns, zero turnovers. <laughs> Let's see him throw more than 17 times. Let's see these nuts. How about that? How about that? It's a big old victory lap. Oh. <laughs> Jared Goff could have won that game against the Arizona Cardinals. Oh. Wow, we have geniuses here. Oh, yeah? What about the game against Tampa Bay? Jared Goff wins you that game? Does he? Huh? Huh? Does he, dumb dumb? No, he doesn't. So shut your dumb ass up and just listen to me while I educate you a little bit. <laughs> uh, oh, I was told I wouldn't be able to drink coffee for two weeks if he lost. What do you got today to that, Adam? Bet ticket! Bet! Taken and successful. <laughs> ah! Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you didn't expect Stafford to ball out. I truly am. And when I say I truly am, I'm really not. <laughs> oh, did you not think for maybe, maybe one second that he wasn't the problem? And that when he delivered you three playoff appearances in his first five full seasons after spending the first two hurt, that maybe this guy was legit. And the problem was actually the front office, the organizations, the awful head coaching after all those years. Maybe, maybe, just maybe. And do you think just maybe playing for the worst franchise in NFL history plays a role in that? Did you know that the Bengals in the last eight days have more playoff wins <laughs> than the Detroit Lions in the last 58 years? Did you know Matthew Stafford has more playoff wins in the last eight days than the Detroit Lions in the last 58 years? My God, you cannot make this up! 58 years, huh, Jeff? 58 years. Yeah, 58. 58 long years. Painful years. One playoff win. Mm -hmm. In eight days... I am stick smacked in the face by the Cincinnati Bengals and Matthew Stafford. <laughs> ah! Oh, tell me more about Stafford not being able to play the big games, huh, Jeff? Huh? I guess so. Let him, let him tell me. They, I'm waiting. It's their narrative. Tell me more about this guy not being able to deliver in the big moments. 
when his team needed him most. How about his team? Yeah. Four turnovers, mm -hmm. four fumbles, short on a 47-yard <laughs> field goal, Brian, all-pro kicker. Yep. His team absolutely collapsed in front of him. And when they tied the game, you know what Matthew fucking Stafford did? It's like, give me the ball. Give me the ball. Me and Cooper Cup have gotten this. And my goodness, the throw to seal the deal. And the hit he took by, oh, mister, I'm going to F you up in Dominican Sue because I get on Sportsman-like panel. That's the prime in Dominican Sue I is. know. Perfectly on cue. Oh, my goodness. On he cue. hit Stafford, and he delivers a money ball downfield. Cup catches it. We all see Stafford run down like an absolute maniac, screaming to spike the ball. They spike the ball, and the rest is history. Yep. Good morning, America. Good morning, Detroit. I wish I could tell you I'm sorry, but I'm absolutely not. <laughs> oh, did he deliver in Detroit? No, he didn't. Who the hell has? Tell me who. Who in the hell has? That's always been the point. One year removed from the Detroit Lions, he is 14-5 and five as a starter, a division winner, two playoff wins, and will be hosting an NFC title game at home. When have the Lions ever hosted an NFC title game at home, Jeff? Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Never. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sh oh, my God. You can't make this up. You can't make this up. Good morning, Jeff. Good morning, man. It's, <laughs> it, it is a great Monday talk to morning. Me, talk to me. I'm, I'm here. I'm here. No, listen. I mean, did, did anybody have any doubt when Stafford got that ball back with about 40 seconds left that he was not tying that game? Or winning that game. I mean, I don't. Maybe the Stafford haters did, but as you can see, Adam up here smoking on that cigar uh, with next to that California roots and Gypsy vodka. He had no doubts, and so did I. I mean, listen, that Rams team. Woo! How about them Rams, baby? And number one, we saw the Rams get off to a great start. You watching that football game? You knew it. Twenty to three in the first half. Stafford, no Godwin, or excuse me, Brady, no Godwin, no AB. Leonard Fournette played. And guess what? That defense showed up for the Rams, and this is why you th th throw all of your eggs in one basket. The Rams invested draft capital for Stafford, for Von Miller. They acquired Odell, and all those guys shined. And it was great to watch, honestly. And Stafford now in an NFC Championship game. Woo! Woo! And he threw more than 17 times, played exceptionally well. It says a lot. And, and we talked about this. He had the chance to change the narrative, and he did just that played an amazing game and about five to six throws that game where you looked back and you thought to yourself hey no way in hell if golf was on the rams he's getting these same completions and that was the first thing i was thinking about i don't know about you adam but I, the people that said golf could win that game golf could ah watching that buccaneers game you questioned yourself because that defense of the bucks looked absolutely dominant over the last couple weeks and there was the first time they played all together healthy the whole entire <clears throat> Bucks defense was playing healthy. They had all the guys out there. Sean Murphy Bunting was back out there. And it didn't matter. Stafford was slinging it. Cooper Cup, whew, having a game that we're used to seeing what Cooper Cup does. And Aaron Donald being the absolute disruptor he is. So, uh, happy for the Rams. They deserve it, man. I mean, I, I picked Tom Brady, obviously. Uh, and for a second, those four fumbles, three fumbles at the end, sure looked like Tom Brady had a chance, but... At the end of the day, I'm not mad. I, you can't be mad. Like, if you pick the Bucks, you can't be mad. That game was... Whew. Stafford played a hell of a game. Stafford played a hell of a game. I think everybody who we'll, watched that game we'll can agree with that. We'll get to the game. Um, we'll get to the game in a bit. Thank you for the coffee. Oh, yeah, I forgot I can drink coffee this week. Don, I haven't seen you yet. I'm waiting for you. I'll tell you what, guys. I'm in a great mood today. I am in an absolute amazing mood today, such in a good mood, that not only are the phone lines open today, Jeff, feel free to drop it in the chat, 313-552-6322, you can call in anonymously and apologize and admit you were wrong. You don't have to say your real name. It's okay. I, I, I am not in the, I'm not in the business of having to embarrass people. It's not in my interest. But listen, all you Stafford critics... The lines are open. Call in. No issues. Do it anonymously. I have no problem. We'll have a conversation. You can tell me you were wrong. You can tell me about this pathetic franchise. Oh, speaking of which. 
<laughs> oh, fish, come here for a second, buddy. Come here. We're gonna have some fun this morning. We're gonna have some. Fu we're gonna have some fun. Here, here you go, buddy. Come here. Come take this. I gotta. I need both hands for this. Thank you. We'll start with this gentleman. <laughs> Matt Patricia. Uh, oh. <laughs> here, take that. Oh wait, I got another one. Jim, Jim Schwartz, Matthew Stafford, how'd it go? Huh? How'd it go? How'd it go? Murray Mayhew? Eric Ebron? Over Aaron Donald? Who literally single-handedly changed that game? Uh-oh. Take that. Oh, oh guys, a pretty boy here. We got pretty boy now. Oh! <laughs> Quinn! Uh, Bob Quinn, how you doing, buddy? I'm good. How are you, Adam? Oh, I'm doing okay today. Actually, I'm fantastic. Here, here, Bob, here. Take it. Oh, oh, oh. Now, guys, this one deserves some real attention. <laughs> oh, my God, Jim Caldwell. Jim Caldwell, how you doing, Jim? I'm good, Adam. I'm currently interviewing for uh, two NFL head coaching vacancies. Oh, oh, well, Jim. Well, Jim, uh, you're not going to get those jobs, nor do you after <laughs> after Sunday. <laughs> you loser! 0-2 in the playoffs with Matthew Stafford. Oh, Martha, honey. Martha. Because of your age. Because of your age. Uh, it was the worst picture. I, I found the worst picture I could. Martha, it's not all on you. It really isn't. It's a long lineage of failure. So I'm gonna, I'm going to carefully crumble this paper, and I'm gonna gently toss it. But you deserve it. And you know, here on the show, we save the best for last. Sheila Fordhamp. Sheila, I gotta say, I love you this morning. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for not pulling a Calvin or a Barry. Thank you for being different. Thank you for trading Stafford so every person in this city could wake the hell up. And I hope your franchise does as well in the near future. And realize you threw away a franchise quarterback after 12 years that you failed to build around. And I'm very happy you got two first round picks about it. That was the absolute correct decision to trade him. You, Detroit. Couldn't make Tom Brady or Peyton freaking Manning work. Let alone Matthew Stafford. Have fun. Oh. Oh, yes. <laughs> Jeff. Jeff. I haven't. I don't think the birth of my child could outdo this one. Oh, yeah. This is. Uh, I don't think so. No. This is I historic. really don't. You this know what? Great. Let's Let's take a break. Let's take a break. When we get back, we'll actually talk about the game that unfolded. The greatness that was on the field on Sunday afternoon. Mm -hmm. The game in Tampa Bay, which had the Rams walking off 30-27. to We'll get to that right after the break. But before we go, Jeff, could you tell everybody at home about Guardian Alarm? I can. Well, we talk about defenses. And we know that Rams defense showed up uh, for Stafford. And listen, let me talk about this for a second. Guardian Alarm, they get it. Whether for home or for business, a good defense, it helps you feel secure. We all know this. Guardian Alarm has steady the art technology that helps you feel safe, all with 24-7 local monitoring. Guardian Alarm also has convenient features that let you check in on your home or business, control lights or temperatures, detect smoke or carbon monoxide. You can detect that cigar smoke that Adam's puffing out over there and it'll even let you lock and unlock doors. Call 800 stay, stay out, out today. That's 800 stay out. Stay and don't out. forget get let the th hell out. You heard fish. Get out. And don't forget let them know Woodward Sports sent you. Hi, I'm Kay Cunningham. Working with Hall Financial to purchase my first home was easier than I could have ever imagined. They treated me like family from start to finish. Find out for yourself at callhallfirst.com. Fellows, football season is here. It's time to make your grooming experience easy like Sunday morning. Get to Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men. Walk in, relax, watch your favorite team play, and before you know it, your hair will be game ready. Get to Lady Jane's, open 10 to 8, 7 days a week. Walk in anytime. It's wicked awesome. Go! Detroit Sports On Demand. DeAndre Swift, he's going to take it all the way for the touchdown! Oh, 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 oh
Cole. Make sure you download the Woodward Sports app today. Take us with you everywhere you go. Search Woodward Sports Network or WSN Live. Welcome back to the Morning Woodward Show. <laughs> Can't see the haters with those shades, Adam. <laughs> oh, oh, no, n- nobody, nobody can mess up this vibe this morning. No, no nothing, nobody nothing, can. nothing, nope. nothing. Oh, and it's on. It's not going to stop. It's going to be like this for the rest of the show. Ladies and freaking gentlemen, especially you gentlemen at home. Now, you obviously saw me smoking a cigar. I am not a selfish person. I definitely brought more cigars. I brought one for Jeff, one for Alex. Let's go. Here you go, buddy. Alex, you can get this after the show, bud. And of course, I bought one for Fish, even though he doesn't smoke. And just for all of you at home, (laughs) all of you Matthew Stafford critics, I brought you none. (laughs) Just today. You are on the losing side. And losers don't get celebratory cigars. That is right. (laughs) Oh, Jesus Christ. You couldn't have told me this would happen. (laughs) I already knew. (laughs) Oh, God. Oh, my God. All right. Where do we start with this thriller, Jeff? (sighs) My goodness, what a football game. Tom Brady and the Bucs took advantage of... After, uh, after every mistake, yeah, after late. mistake, after yeah. mistake, Cup hadn't fumbled all year. Mm-hmm. Fumbled. Acres fumbles twice, twice like yeah. uncharacteristic issues, and then a f- a forty-seven yard field goal that was short. I don't think I've seen that happen since the nineties. Mm-hmm. Everything went against the Rams and Matthew Stafford in the second half. He had only thrown the ball twice in the first nine minutes of the fourth quarter. The Rams were coasting, but they couldn't stop shooting themselves in the foot. And what happens? To be completely transparent and honest with all of you, we talk about head coaches a lot. I'm on the show and responsibility, et cetera, et cetera. I wasn't even upset when the Tampa Bay Buccaneers tied the game with Sean McVay. How could I be? Cam Akers fumbles twice? Cooper Cup fumbles? Really? A 47-yard field goal short. I'm supposed to get mad at the head coach, the quarterback. I got to find people. No, I'm not going to find somebody to blame. Even had the Rams lost the game, that would have been one of the most unbelievable individual collapses I've ever seen since the Super Bowl. Yep. And, of course, they tie it. And what happens? What happens, ladies and gentlemen? (laughs) I'll tell you what happens. Matthew Stafford gets the ball, gets sacked. They call timeout, gets up, throws a beautiful loft pass to Cooper Cup. Beautiful route. And then he gets out of bounds. They line up. And what does Stafford do, Jeff? Stafford does what you said he could never do. Make the big play in the big moment when his team needed him the most. And what's Stafford do? He delivered an absolute strike to Cooper Cup. With no timeouts. (laughs) And they ran down the field. And they were able to spike the ball. Not only were they able to spike the ball, they were able to execute that play and run all the way downfield quicker than the Dallas Cowboys. (laughs) Could run a quarterback draw. And spike it. Oh, oh my God. God loves me this morning. I am a firm believer. Buddha, Jesus, I don't care what you believe in. I don't. Doesn't matter. You're an atheist. I'm with you. It's all good. Doesn't matter. Buddhism, Judaism, Islam, doesn't matter. We're all brothers today. (laughs) Because God exists. (laughs) Oh my God. Stafford delivers a strike. They go down. They spike the ball. And that is ball game. Matt Gay down the middle. Jeff, what the hell did we watch on Sunday? We watched a a very complete Rams team absolutely take advantage of a a Buccaneers team that was injury riddled. Yes, they had Tom Brady. And you saw all the turnovers they had late in the game almost costed them. But the moral of the story is this is what you get 
when you make that trade, you acquire Matthew Stafford to a already really stacked team. I mean, listen, LA, it's more than just about the team. People say, well, look at, all, look at the roster. Look at the organization. That's what I want to say. Look at the organization. Look at the culture Matthew Stafford walked into. His play. The, if you watch this year, if you're, if you're a Lions fan, you've been watching Stafford for 12 years, you watch, you tune into that Rams game versus the Bucks. you have no idea what you witnessed. Until the last part, obviously. I, know, I had no doubts Matthew was winning that ball game with no timeouts. I just had that feeling. He's done it so many times, not in the playoffs, of course, but in the regular season. Now, that game, Von Miller, Aaron Donald, Jalen Ramsey, that defense came to play. But the turnovers, and I love that you brought it up, the turnovers, and the fact that Sean McVay in those situations, you'd expect if you had Jared Goff, be more conservative. You know, uh, maybe we'll go to overtime. We'll, we'll play the long run. Hell no. You got Stafford, and you have a guy who can make those type of throws. You do it. No timeouts despite that. Two completions back-to-back to, back to Cooper Cup. Uh, typical Stafford running down the field, yelling at his teammates to hurry up, getting set, getting the spike, and that's, that was history, man. And I, I don't even care the game ended up being tied. I mean, the, the Rams dominated for, for really three quarters. I mean, the, the Bucks scored 14 in the, in the fourth quarter, clawed out of that hole they were in, but it did not matter. What a coaching clinic by Sean McVay, man, and Cooper Cup as well. It was just a great game. You, you can't, if you're any fan, if you're a Lions fan, or just a fan in general, I mean, this is, now, we're going to talk about the 49ers matchup, but just to celebrate this victory, he beat Tom Brady. Imagine, imagine this. He's on the Lions. You make the playoffs, and you beat Tom Brady on the road. On the road! I mean, that's the most biggest mind F there is in this whole situation. Despite all the injuries, yes, they didn't have Chris Godwin, but guess what? That whole Bucks defense was healthy. It was all healthy. There's no excuses on that side of the ball, and Matthew Stafford got the job done on the road in Tampa against the Super Bowl champion. Alex, so, could, we, could we zoom can't in on my nothing. socks? You can't say Look at the socks. Can we zoom in on my socks? Look at this. I, I got a story to tell with this. Can this we man. zoom in? You can go to my camera. You can go. You can go. It's all good. Take your time. I'm not worried. I got, I got years after yesterday. <laughs> oh, my God. Zoom in on these socks. Do you guys see this? Yes, yeah, blue, red stripes, uh, red bridges actually are the socks. Now, let me tell you a story. If you pay really close attention, you'll see white polka dots. Now, for every white polka dot you see on these socks, uh -oh. are every fuck I could give about your Matthew Stafford opinion. <laughs> and there aren't any. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, you know, guys, I don't even know what to tell you this morning. <laughs> I'm just going to drink my coffee. I'm going to kick back. I'm going to enjoy my Monday. Nobody can kill my vibe. Kendrick Lamar, all-time song. I was listening to that on the way in. Oh, yes. Look at those socks. For every one polka dot you see on here, it's the fuck I could give for your opinion on Matthew Stafford. And there aren't none. <laughs> there aren't any. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Jeff, good morning. Man, I'm so How happy. was your weekend? It was great. What a weekend of that, football. I was just selling fish before the show. That was probably the best weekend of football. You said it yourself. You can't be mad at a single head coach. And I think that speaks volumes to the games we were able to see. I'm like, oh, my God. My God. Started with the Bengals-Titans. Can't complain there. I picked the Titans. Can't complain there. Bengals deserve it. Next game, Packers and 49ers. We'll get into all that. We but, did go 3-1 and one on our bets, right? Or did you take the Bills along with me? Nope, I took the Chiefs. The only so one we I lost three was the Bucks. One, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Not bad, not bad. We did pretty yeah. good this weekend. Let's go back to the game, all right? Matthew Stafford, look, forget the outstanding greatness, the elite level of quarterback play we saw. Let's just take the attention away from Matthew Stafford right now. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about... The Rams defense early on. Now, this is not a knock against Tom Brady. This is the reality when you play any quarterback, which is why edge rushers and D-linemen are so valuable. They are. When you can get to the quarterback, you can affect the game plan no matter how good it is. Yeah, affect the timing. And they were able to throw off Brady early. Even Mike Evans was dropping the ball. And, you know, I, I really want to get to this before we go to break. Sunday's games are why you don't draft Kyle Hamilton at two. And I love Kyle Hamilton. I think he's a fantastic player. But in today's NFL, Jalen Ramsey got beat eventually did. by Mike Evans. Jalen Ramsey. He did. Eventually gets beaten on a playoff game. It happens. The league is so offensively driven. You need people on the defensive line that can maul the opposing team's quarterback. And oh, just a fun fact, Mike Vrabel learned this on, on Saturday. You need a quarterback. Yeah. 
quarterback, head coach, front office, D lineman, killed the opposing quarterback, you win football games, everybody is happy. I just gave the whole formula away, and I didn't charge you a dollar. <laughs> I'm such a generous man. Jeff, what do you think about that? Because oh, I- no safety in the NFL, not even Kevin Byard, has that value. And this extent, this is the only moment we only have really two, three minutes to talk about this. So I, I want your opinion. What do you think of me saying, Kyle Hamilton, this is why you can't take him at number two? Yeah, you need game wreckers. I mean, we made this point uh, again is Kayvon or Aiden. These guys, once you do make the playoffs, and, and again, all playoff teams are good teams. I mean, that's a no brainer. These guys, you're in the playoffs for a reason. You need a pass rusher. I mean, Kyle Hamilton, as great as he can be projection wise, you hit it right on the head. Like you, you saw it in the Titans versus Bengals game. How many times was Joe Burrow sacked? Nine times. Didn't matter. Joe Burrow's the guy, and that's the that's the difference. You have Tannehill. Yes, there was drop passes, but at the end of the day, quarterback matters. You're absolutely right. I mean, you, if you get sacked nine times, it, 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 despite that, you win. You need a pass rusher, man. It, it at least you affect the game. And you saw it. Aaron Donald, Von Miller, I'm Leonard so glad Floyd. you said that. The nine sacks in the Bengals game. Why Why was Tennessee in the game? Because of Kevin Byard? And look, he's an all-pro safety. I'm, <laughs> right, I'm not, right. This is not an attempt to slander any safety. I mean, there's some really good safety. Antoine Winfield Jr., yeah, perfect example. Beaten by Cooper Cup, yes or no? Yes. On the game-ending ch- play. Yep. Guys, not even Kyle Hamilton could have stopped it. When you have to go up against, uh, you have to go up against these premier athletes, down after down after down after down. It is hard to play cornerback. It is hard to play safety. And when you want to invest the number two overall pick on a guy who can't even get to the quarterback, it's a problem. And Ed Reed played in a different NFL. Ed Reed in today's NFL, honestly, probably gets maybe more interceptions. Yeah, definitely. To be honest, he's unbelievable. But unless you see Ed Reed in the kid, you can't take him at number two. But that's all we're going to talk about Kyle Hamilton for today. We got to get to the next game. My goodness, the NFL treated us to one of, if not the greatest weekend. We don't even have time to talk about Michigan State or Michigan basketball today. Unbelievable. Um, We'll get to that all tomorrow. The Niners upset the Packers. We'll get to that after the break. But before we go, I got to tell you about the Folding Warehouse. The Folding Warehouse is the place to be. It is such a good time. Bring your family, friends, team building event, corporate party, doesn't matter. You can host it. They have a $2 Mystic Beer Machine, over 100 beers at the facility, multiple bars throughout the facility, and of course, you can bring in your own food or have it catered. Guys, the Folding Warehouse in Hamtramck, check them out. Great people and an even better time. We'll see you guys right after the break. Okay, you thirsty little spin goblins. I want you to pedal into the next dimension. Spin it! Spin! Spin! Uh-oh! Carmen's falling behind. Let's give her the hiss of shame. Spin! Spin! Spin till you bleed! Don't ride the bike of shame. Come to Planet Fitness and find your own lane with tons of equipment, free fitness training, and no hissing. Join today for just $10 a month. That's how you answer. We love our sports. We just wish they'd love us back. Detroit Sports for Detroit Sports fans. Woodward Sports. To the morning Woodward show here on the Woodward Sports Network. Whew. Niners Packers, what a game. But before we get to that game, we do have a caller. Our first potential Matthew Stafford critic who can call in anonymously. I don't need to know his name. Fish, could you please put him through? Good morning. Who am I talking with to? My name is Jared. Hey, Jared. How you doing, buddy? How was your weekend? I'm doing very well. Oh, my weekend was amazing. All right. Oh, that's what we love to hear. All right, give it to me, Jared. Your thoughts on Matthew Stafford after the game on Sunday? Oh, uh, Lions deep, our offense just almost threw that game big time. The only reason why was the defense in Stafford. That's the only reason why they won that game. Wait, so I'm confused. So the defense won them that game? And Stafford, yes. And, oh, okay. The fumbles. Yeah, 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 the fumbles yeah, yeah. you can't do anything about. Listen, yeah. I mean... The 24 points in the, the second half. The fact that I mean, Cooper Cup fumbles, the fact that Cam Akers fumbles twice, a short on a 47-yarder, I wasn't even mad at that point. But look, I just think people... No. Jared, people need to accept that this guy was not the problem in Detroit. 
I 100% agree. I knew he wasn't the problem. And I, I, you know what? I'm, I'm really glad you called this morning because I need Lions fans to really just get it off their chest so you can move on. You have two first-round picks. Yeah. Everything is up. Everything is up and forward after this. So get it off your chest. If you're a critic, apologize. And if you're a Stafford believer, you can call in. I don't mind to. Everybody can call in this morning. I have no issues. Jared, thank you so much for calling in, buddy. Uh, thanks for supporting the show. Uh, we'd love to hear you call back soon. 100%. All right, appreciate you, Jared. All right. Let's appreciate get into the Niners Packers. Yeah. Zero, zero Stafford critics calling in this morning. I, I will refrain... I will refrain from calling them out by their names. You know who you are. <laughs> and you know where to find me. <laughs> and some of you work with me. <laughs> oh, yes! Adam, what is your Twitter for those that want to attack oh, you on Twitter? Oh, my God. You can all get it. Alex can put it up on the screen. It's my first name and last name. A-D-H-A-M-B-E-Y-D-O-U-N. Have a ball. Yeah. You can apologize me publicly. Or privately in my DMs. Feel free. I'll accept all messages today. Call in. DM. Call. It's all good. I will not blast you publicly. Don't worry. No. I have the receipts. <clears throat> I have them all. Don't worry, Matthew Stafford critics. You don't call in this morning and publicly apologize. I will make you. You don't think I don't remember the October, November tweets? Pick six Stafford. Never going to win a playoff game. Can't even win the division. Awful quarterback. Just has a good arm. I remember. Oh, I remember. And let me be more clear. When Matthew Stafford was traded, I was one of the people that said he needed to go. You could not get it done with Matthew Stafford in Detroit. An indictment on Detroit. Not Stafford. Was Stafford 8-64 and 64 at the time against winning teams? Absolutely. Did he need to change the narrative on his career in Detroit? Absolutely. That was the talk at the time. Totally true. Today, all of you shut the hell up. Do me a favor. Shut the hell up. You can DM me. You can call in. Yeah. We're accepting all the apologies this yeah, morning. We're, we're on Twitter. Anonymously. Yeah. I don't, it doesn't need, you don't need to tell me your real name. Jared, thank you so much for calling in. Can't thank you enough. 49ers upset the Packers 13-10. Rodgers is now 0-4 in the playoffs against the Niners. The Niners clinched their second NFC championship game in three years. Now, Jeff, a coach, their coach has a losing record. Cal Shanahan is a bum, right? <laughs> Isn't that the talk? I guess so. And I think I put out a fantastic tweet on, uh, I believe it was Saturday night. To all you people that were commenting live on the Morning Woodward show, in October, in August, telling me that Kyle Shanahan was a fraud and that the Lions would steamroll him week one and that he has a losing record and that he's not a good coach. I'm not even going to swear. I'll just say take that. Two NFC title appearances in three years. You have 158. Shut the hell up. Shut the hell up. You can't talk to me this morning. It kills me how right I am. It really does. And you're damn right I'm wearing a turtleneck on a Monday. And a vest. You're damn right. It is the absolute day to do it. Jeff. Oh, this game yeah. blew my mind. Uh, I thought it would be close and ugly. I thought the Packers would win, but I thought the Niners would cover. That was part of my bets over the weekend. Mm -hmm. It didn't surprise me, though, that the, the Niners won. It really didn't. No, it didn't I, surprise I, me. I said it Friday. I, I will openly admit it. I could not imagine a Monday morning where I had to walk in and talk about the Packers losing. I still can't believe it. No. Home favorites <clears throat> in Lambeau, and you failed to deliver again, Aaron? We talked about this with Peyton Manning before his last Super Bowl in Denver. Aaron, you're an all-time great. One of the best to ever do it. Top 10 easily, top 8, top 6, top 5. I don't care where you put him. He's not better than Brady. He's not above Montana. He's not above Manning even. And we need to understand that, even though he's probably the greatest talent we've ever seen. Right. Failed to deliver again. 
Jeff, what the hell's going on? Well, I got two words for you really to find the whole game. It's special teams. And we're not, I'm not surprised. If you watch the Packers this whole season, you knew their special teams unit was you know going to cost them a game eventually. I mean, we just saw their offense and defense playing so well. Um, obviously, we had questions about their run defense against the 49ers, but that's what defined the game on Saturday night. It was special teams, and you saw it. The Packers haven't had an adequate special teams really all year, and you're lined up early to try and block the game-winning field goal, and you only have 10 guys out there. 10 guys out of a possible 11. That's that's on coaching. That's on special teams. It's not on Matt LaFleur, but uh, partially it is. But special teams unit costed them that game. I mean, the block punt, the blocked field goal, um, things were just <laughs> weren't going the Packers' way. And credit to the 49ers, man. I mean, come on. The, the 49ers scored off a blocked punt. They blocked a field goal of their own and were soured in the red zone defensively. I, I, the, I think the 49ers won this game without having an offensive touchdown. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? No offensive touchdown. They still managed to win the game. It says a lot about the Packers. And we talk about Aaron all the time. As, as, listen, Aaron's my MVP, of course. It's a regular season award. But if you want to talk about Aaron in the grand scheme of things, Aaron is probably, to me, the most talented quarterback ever. But I don't think the, the difference between Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady is Aaron doesn't have that that trait that elevates the entire locker room when he walks in. Like Tom Brady goes to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, turns that entire organization around in one year because of his presence. Aaron Rodgers, although he's so talented. I just don't think he elevates his teammates, his presence, you know, when he walks in the room, has everybody playing 110%, just like Tom Brady does. And I think that's the difference. The, the last play of the game forced the ball down to Devontae Adams. You had Alan Lazard open. You had other guys open. Um, it is what it is. The Packers, they came short. They're upset. Now people are going to look at Aaron Rodgers. What is he doing in the offseason? Now that question arises. But what I took away from it is Kyle Shanahan, and that's really what you have to take away from it. Jimmy G, the guy can win in the playoffs, and I don't know if you want to give more credit. Jimmy G didn't play the greatest game, but still won the game, so it goes back to that defense holding the Packers to 10 points. So 49ers are a dangerous team. I mean, they could realistically, if they beat the Rams, will I be surprised? No, but I will be surprised that Kyle Shanahan, in a year where they had to win the last game to get in, and, and what he's done in the playoffs, man, he, he ain't an easy road. You beat the Dallas Cowboys, now you beat the Packers, now you have to get to the Rams. It's a hell of a playoff run if they get to the Super Bowl, man. And I don't think they'll win it. But 49ers are in a great position. And they overachieved this year. And you have Trey Lance waiting to come into the uh, you know starting lineup next season probably. So you can't complain, man. I mean, listen, if you're a Packers fan, you're pissed off. But if you're an NFL fan, you appreciate what the 49ers have done over the last couple of years with that team, with those guys. Nick Bosa, talk about game wreckers. That's what it does, having those types of guys available that get after Aaron Rodgers, cause problems. Aaron Rodgers didn't have a passing touchdown that game. So... Credit to the 49ers. They played a hell of a ball game on both sides of the ball, that except was, for Jimmy It G. was a great football weekend. I don't think anybody yeah. was upset with any result. So happy I could drink coffee this week. But I never doubted you. I never doubted you. Don't worry. I never doubted that I would spend a whole week without caffeine. You think, <laughs> you think I would make that bet without knowing I would win? Oh, man. I am the last person you want to bet with. Believe me, I'll give you my login to my FanDuel account. I'll give you my login to my DraftKings account, my my bookie account. Go so look, numbers speak for themselves. <laughs> oh yes. Oh, you know, J Jeff. Yesterday and and really this whole weekend was more than just about football. Mm -hmm. It was really about Detroit. Everything about that the entire weekend was about Detroit. Yeah, you could take a lot Honestly. from it. You could take so much from it. The Bengals, the You need Stafford. a quarterback to win in the NFL, yes or no, Jeff? You do. Obviously, right? Absolutely. The, the Titans learned the hard way. Yep. And they, they're a great team. I love Mike Vrabel. I think he should be coach of the year. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you need a team as well. But you need a team. You need a quarterback. Coach. You need a competent head coach. Yep. You need, dare I say, a front office that knows what they're doing that wouldn't draft Eric Ebron over Aaron Donald, but we don't have to go there. <laughs> Oh, or should I go up to the top in the ownership, right? Rod Wood, the the family accountant. That's who's in charge now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're we're going to go 58 years of my family friends. Imagine I hired my... Imagine, it's like me hiring Wasim to run day-to-day -day operations of Woodward Sports. He's a dentist. He's not qualified. But... Hey, I can do whatever I want, right? That, that's the Ford mindset for the last 58 years. And it all led up to you getting a franchise quarterback, having him for 12 seasons, and failing, 
failing to deliver this fan base and that quarterback the necessary tools required to make a championship potential run, let alone even win your division or a playoff game, do I have to add? No, you supplied him with Jim Schwartz, C to C minus to C coach, Jim Caldwell, C minus C coach, maybe C plus, depends who you ask. Man, my taste, he's a C coach, average, nothing special. Never gave him a, a prominent GM. Never gave him a structure in the organization that could lead to consistent winning, even though he led you to three playoff appearances in his first five full seasons. <laughs> Isn't that funny, huh? Isn't that funny? And what did you do? You broke up the team. You went into another rebuild. You kept Caldwell, even though he had peaked. And then you fire him. You bring in the biggest load of garbage I think this town has ever seen. And it's seen a lot of garbage. You bring in Bob Quinn and Matt Patricia. <laughs> and of course, they can't get anything out of Stafford. You waste another three seasons. And then in the last season of that three, you let those same people make the decision of your franchise's future. They draft Jeff Okuda. He hasn't played in three years. Now, does he become a Jalen Ramsey, a top-tier corner? Honestly, at this point, it's not fair to expect it. But damn it, you have to live with it. And you passed on Justin Herbert. <laughs> that is a you, Ford family. That is you and your family, your franchise. And you've delivered this fan base nothing. So yes, I will sit up here with my feet on this desk all day until you wake the hell up and understand you are the reason why this fan base has gotten nothing in 58 years. I shouldn't have to watch the Cincinnati Bengals go 4-11-1 and, and then get to the AFC title game in a stacked AFC, yeah. in a stacked division where they were projected to finish last. What do I get? Nothing. <laughs> I'm told to wait more, which I don't mind. I'll, I'll be patient till I die. You've got me, Detroit. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. I support the Tigers, Pistons, Red Wings, Lions. I love them all to death. I'll never change. Having said that, you have to admit where you were wrong and publicly coming out and saying, we have failed since our first year of ownership to put out a product that you, the Detroit Lions fan base, could be proud of. That is on your ownership. And that is on them to own and say. Yeah, for never going all in. Now, does that mean they can't do it in the future with Dan Campbell and Brad Holmes? Has nothing to do with Brad Holmes or Dan Campbell. They are completely absolved from this conversation. I have nothing against yeah. them right now. This is everything about the Ford family. Go look at their go look at their war rooms. Go see who's at the front and center table. All the sisters and the mother. Yeah. Woo! It's not a game. Go Lions! And people pay a lot of money and their hard-earned money to go to those games and support this team and buy their children merchandise and buy themselves merchandise while you sit in the war room and absolutely piss all over every hard-working American in the city of Detroit that supports this team and even people across the United States who may support them. Yeah, they never did what the Rams did. Corey, get in here! Oh, Corey's here. Oh, we got to discuss this. We got to go to break. When we get back, I'm going to have Corey in. We'll talk about the Tennessee game later. Corey, I hope you're well. You have a mask on. Or are you sick? Oh, you're good. I'm glad. You look sexy. I love the outfit. I love the chain. Came in here dripped out. All right. We have a lot to discuss. Excuse my... Uh, excuse my... Uh, you want a cigar? I'll light one for you right now. We got the California I got roots. cigars. I've got booze. Rosé. You got a Monte Cristo white color? No, I don't. Uh, I'm no, sorry. Not. I'm, not, I'm not that prepared. <laughs> I've got gypsy. I've got as what I have what I have delivered today. All right, but we got to go to break. When we get back, Corey's in. Jeff, could you tell us about actually? Yeah, Jeff, could you tell us about our good friends at Lady Jane's? Well, listen, guys. Oof. A lot of you guys need a haircut. I can already sense that. Lady Jane's, let's be honest. We like simple stuff. We like football five days a week. And we like things uncomplicated. So come to Lady Jane's. I'm looking at the front door right now. You can walk in, sit in one of the comfy chairs, watch your favorite sports teams on Sports Center, And before you know it, you're handsome and clean. Walk in, sign in, sit down, and get to Lady Jane's. Open 10 to 8, seven days a week. Walk in anytime because it is wicked awesome. Everything that we've hoped for finally has 
Right right side. Oh, that is Edwards out there. He goes up in the air at the goal line. Hey, it's Greg Edwards here wanting to welcome the Sports Marketing Agency to Woodward Sports Network to the family. Glad to have you guys. For the last decade, the Sports Marketing Agency has literally leveraged athletes around issues such as mental health and substance abuse. What's the over-under? Should I tease? Who is the lock of the night? Make sure you're watching Woodward Bets to get the latest in sports betting and more. Woodward Bets, daily on Woodward Sports. Welcome back to the beautiful Woodward Sports Studios. Downtown Birmingham. Now, the weather may not be the best this morning, so please, all of you drive safe. And if you're listening in, listening on the app, we appreciate it. Download the Woodward Sports app, both available on Android and Apple, of course. But please be safe, whether you're driving, at home, just be safe today. The weather is not the best. Good morning, all of you. I hope you're having as good of a day as I am. I really do. But to be quite frank with you, none of you could be having the day I'm having. The day I'm having happens once in a lifetime. Now, I will say, there is only one occasion that can top this. The Lions ever getting, dare I say, winning a Super Bowl. I winning will a... do 1,000 times what I'm doing right now if on they this win a morning playoff show. Game, uh, I may uh, do the show naked yeah. if the Lions win the Super yeah. Bowl. If they won a playoff game, I'd come in with cigars. There's no way. That's... Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it, it would be a Cigar Monday if yeah. they won a playoff game. But Definitely. anyways, Corey Woods joins us this morning. Corey, how are you? Walk me through your weekend. I am sorry about your bets. The floor is yours. I had a great weekend. I mean, <laughs> it was one of the great weekends of football, I think, in NFL history. I mean, it was some really good games. Not going to lie, caught had some personal things to take care of. So I caught on the um, the Bills and Chiefs game a little late. Going to go back and rewatch you it. You still but, had a show. I mean, I still got to catch uh, some glimpses of it. And then, man, that was just – whoo, that was, that was a – that was a hell of a weekend. That's all I can say. But uh, outside of um, OBJ not getting a touchdown in my parlay, getting messed up, it was great. Walk me through Matthew Stafford and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Obviously, th they gave them every opportunity to win that game, meaning the Rams. I mean, four fumbles, pathetic. I missed a short field goal from 47 yards. I haven't seen that since the 90s. <laughs> well, got to go through a couple of things. First off, I, I got to address some stupid stupidity. I saw Go off on my TL. People were saying that, first off, congrats to Matthew Stafford, but there were people saying that Tom Brady got exposed in that loss. And I got to say this. You know what? Find me the quarterback that can come back down 27-3, even if the game is handed to him. Yeah. But they I, I, only one GOAT. I, I just got to say this. Like, the <clears> man <throat> has, has been in the Super Bowl half of his career. We're talking about two decades. Mm -hmm. Been in the Super Bowl half of his career. <clears throat> He's... Six, five, six years away from 50. He's in the MVP discussion. Mm -hmm. And he played a bad game, and people are talking about he got exposed. You know what? I would love to be exposed after 10 Super Bowl appearances and seven, winning seven of them. I would, I yeah. would kill to be that exposed. At damn near 45. <laughs> at, damn near 40, at damn near 45, almost 50. Stop sounding <laughs> like damn fools. But we got to talk about Matthew Stafford. Now, i got to be up – be up front. Everybody knows who knows me. I know I'm an admitted Stafford critic. And because it was because here in Detroit, he did not get it done. Whether you want to say it was because of the Lions or not, that's you can have that argument. But the bottom line is that while he was not the total problem here in Detroit, he did have some bad moments. All I said is he's a good quarterback that had bad moments. And part of the reason that the Lions were 0 and 3 in the postseason with, with him is because of things that he did or, or lack thereof. Right. But the thing about this is that, and I also want to add this in there too, I don't count the last three years of him here against him. I mean, you got handed a cluster F is of a coach. Is he elite now? Can we say he's elite? I or do we need an NFC title? I'm I think, asking. What's no, elite? No, I'm, I'm what's elite? Like, I, 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 think, he, I think he's I, an elite I, I, quarterback. Now, like Aaron, is he great? No, he's not great. I, yeah, I, you, you can't be what? great yeah. without the Ws. I, I, I'm, I'm going to hold off on elite until he What's wins elite NFC. Play? Elite play is elite. he's playing at a he's, top he's, five he's, level. He's, he's, he is. He is. He is there's, there's two different things here. 
is he elite or is he playing elite? He's I don't think he's. I don't level. think he's elite yet. But is he playing at an elite Absolutely. level? Absolutely. You give him five you, years with. You give him five more seasons with Sean McVay. Who yeah. knows? Not only will he be it's elite. Absolutely. He those, may, he those, may, oh. those past two games that he played. Lights out. Best football I've ever seen him play in his career. People want to talk about like, oh, well, that's the Matthew Stafford I saw in Detroit. No, you didn't. Which one? You, you saw a Matthew Stafford in Detroit who, yes, he, he had come back, you know, led fourth quarter comebacks, but you also saw the Matthew Stafford in Detroit who's the active leader in pick sixes in the NFL history. Well, active does leader. It matter? But, 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 wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. But what I'm saying is that here in Detroit, he just had a bad chapter of his career. Matthew Stafford's career is still – being written, he's Thank now you. in a, he's yeah. now you. in a new chapter. If you're, he's yeah. now in a new chapter of his career with new coaches, new scenery, yep. new new weapons at his disposal. So now he's able to change his narrative, and that is what he's been doing. He's been changing the narrative of his time in Detroit here, right, may right, I, we're not, out I there, right now in LA. Mind this morning, Matthew Stafford is one win away from having as many NFC titles as Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! Can we talk about the Packers? Yeah, uh, Brett yeah, Favre and Aaron—they you know had one no, in two Super Bowls. I don't want to give them the time of day. Today. I know I'm not saying legitimately, all, but just react we, to that. React yeah, to that. You had Aaron Rodgers and Brett Favre. You, you know had two what? Super Bowls. I think it's fair to say they underachieved in 30 okay. years with only two Super Bowls. Only, even though that's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. But more, two look, more I mean, us. they were always in it. They were always in the games. I, I would kill for that as a Lions fan. If yeah. you told me I got 15 years of Stafford. Five NFC title games, and we only got to one Super Bowl, but we won it. That's a success for me. Yeah. Winning is hard in the NFL. Go ask Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills what it's like to win in the NFL. Go. We got a lot to talk Don't about. Don't talk John. to me about, oh, they underachieved. When you haven't achieved, God damn it, not even .001 of what they have. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to bail off of that. I'm, I'm not going to criticize them this morning. Maybe later in the week. Maybe. Maybe. But I got to say, he's elite. He's elite. I've never been so comfortable, by the way. I may do the show for the rest of my life like this. <laughs> wow. It feels good, Corey. Feels good. And you know what? I, I said this publicly already on the show, too. Anybody can call in. Many Matthew Stafford critic. You can call in anonymously. Just apologize. Yeah. And we can move on. Now, I, I know some of you are going to say, well, he's not great. He's not Aaron Rodgers. He's not Brady. No. No shit. But here's the thing. As I said, he's in a be, different though. chapter of he's, his career right now. He, can, he has the opportunity the to still do that. He has the opportunity to change it's, the it's, narrative it's, on it's, his it's, career, and he already has. He already has. 13 years, in, 12 years in Detroit, nada. He's already accomplished more in one year yeah. in, in, with the L.A. Rams than the Ra than Detroit 12 seasons in Detroit. Yeah. Beat so Tom it's, Brady it's, on the it's, road. It's, yep. I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, Don't really, there's years. really nothing you can criticize about him. Do not undersell it. Not in 12 years. Matthew Stafford in eight days has accomplished more than the Detroit Lions have in 58 years. Two playoff wins. He's won more divisions and one season post-removed from the yeah. Detroit Lions and the hardest division in the NFL than the Detroit Lions have in the <laughs> NFC North since 1993. I he, think that if you wanted to criticize him before, I think that's fair. But I think if you wanted to criticize him after what you're seeing, so, seeing lately, I don't think you're being objective. I don't think you're being realistic about being what you're wanting. Listen, I came out publicly and said I was wrong on Penny Sewell being able to play right tackle. If I can admit I'm wrong and be honest with you, you can be it's honest It's no shame in admitting that you're There's wrong. There's no shame in being it's wrong. There's no shame yeah. in being wrong. Nobody, nobody yeah. bats a thousand on these I takes. Bet, I bet my beard <laughs> that the Lions would win on Thanksgiving. They didn't. I paid the price. Yeah, it everybody. happens. You can be wrong. I'm wrong. I'm wrong every day. I could be wrong on a lot of things. Yeah, it it's happens. Okay. Just Just he, he's, went out, he's went out and showed us that, hey, he, that I he can get it done. That he was not, you can build around him. You yeah, can absolutely. win a division with him. You can win playoff games. You can be in a title game. You can host it. Corey, you know the Rams are hosting an NFC title game. I may fly out myself to LA. I may fly <laughs> out. I may take three people from Woodward Sports with me at this point. The Rams have won me so much we, money, we, I don't know what to do. We with are them. one game away from seeing, and I posted this, we are one game away from seeing back-to-back -back Super Bowls hosted, hosted at home, home with a QB playing for that team in their first season. I'll do one even better for you. We are six days away from watching Matthew Stafford host more playoff games than the Detroit Lions have in their history. 
<laughs> it's sick. You it's sick when you think one. about it. You only hosted one. <laughs> And it was in the Silver Dome. You haven't even done it at Ford Field, Martha, Sheila. You haven't even done it in Ford. Maybe it's the maybe it's the building name. Maybe you need to call it Loser Field. I, 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 I do. Know. I do have to admit this, and it was bugging me. There was only one thing that bugged me about the Matthew Stafford and the Rams winning. It was when Calvin Johnson sat in this chair, this very chair yep. last year, yep. and said that he tried to get out of Detroit and they would not allow it. I could only imagine what would have happened if he Calvin done the same thing. would have been able to go to a different team. It didn't matter where he went. He would have done the same thing. I have Absolutely. one even better for you. Uh, did you catch the beginning of the show? No, I was trying to I drive had in this mess. pictures of every single person, Martha, Sheila, everybody down the line, Jim Caldwell. I crumbled all of it and I threw it at the camera. Except for one person, Sheila Ford. I thanked her first for trading Matthew Stafford. The Lions got two first-round picks. We're going to be able to move on in the future. Everything is going to be great. I threw him at the camera. And then I threw her at the camera. Why? Because she allowed Bob Quinn to make that number three pick. They, all I see is terrible decision after terrible decision after terrible decision. I will say this on the Sheila keeping Quinn Trisha around thing. I agree. I'm I'm on the I'm in the, I'm in the middle of it. Here's why. I agree that they should have been gone. You should have never allowed them to stay there and make that pick because they were not making the pick for the future of the franchise. They were making a pick because they thought that somebody's going to come in there and help them immediately save their jobs, i.e. Jeff Okuda. But at the same time, I would just say this: maybe she was just. I'm just thinking. Maybe she was just like, okay. This is my first time behind the wheel. Let me kind of get my feet wet before I, I go no ahead and make a big decision. I have no if she just didn't come out publicly with her mother and Rod Wood and say they're under pressure. You don't put coaches under on the hot seat before the season starts. Yeah, yeah. But stupid, actually, stupid, hey, stupid, stupid, learn, stupid. But you and know what? Learn, learn behind the wheel. And, 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 and you know what? She's in the process of doing a 180 from that moment. I'll tell you what. Jim Grice in the chat said, Adam is on here mocking women. For enjoying football, you're damn right I am. And not just any kind of women, incompetent women. The Ford women are incompetent. They're not allowed to enjoy, fo enjoy football. You know why? Because you and every Lions fan pay their hard-earned money to watch that product on the field, and it's absolute garbage. For 58 years, people bleed, sweat, and cry. I love my Lions. To watch those games on Sunday. And you have those four incompetent women in the war room, you're damn right I have a problem with it. Because there are people who can't even afford to go to Lions games that support and die for this team, that will buy your merchandise and support your pathetic franchise while you spit in their faces with terrible decision after terrible decision after terrible decision. <clears throat> I don't want to hear it anymore. If the Browns and Bungles can figure it out, so can you. Get it together. <laughs> and I hope it's this regime, Corey. I hope it's Brad Holmes and, and Dan Campbell. They got me. I'll always support the team, but I'm just going to tell it like it is, man. They have, a, they have a great shot. I believe in Brad Holmes. I believe that he's a sensible GM. Verdict is still out on Dan Campbell as a coach. I think that he's shown that he's a great unifier of the locker room. And he's the complete opposite of what Matt Patricia was. Uh, the players got. I know people want to say like, "Oh, players galvanize for their coaches." You know, they. You know, no, they don't. They don't. They don't play around every coach. We've seen that with Matt Patricia. Yeah. They, they, they yeah. mailed it in on his on this guy for for Dan Campbell. They're at least selling out as as much as they can. So I just want to see what they can do with more acquiring more talent. Because if Aaron Glenn and Arby Pleasant and Mark DeLeon and those guys on defense can do that with a lot of their guys out then when they get those draft picks in, that quality talent, then, you know, who knows what they can do. But I have one question for you. Actually, I have two. So we got to go to break. When we get back, I would love to ask you about Matthew Stafford moving forward and Kyle Hamilton at number two. I brought up a good point earlier in the show. I do want to, your thoughts on it. But we do got to go to break, which means, whew, Jeff, could you tell everybody about our good friends at SMA? Oh, she said good friends at... Cintron? Oh, excuse me, Cintron, yes. Because Cintron, let me tell you about Cintron. Cintron World is an aspirational lifestyle beverage brand. I saw me drinking it last week. It was absolutely delicious. And they have a line of sparkling flavor and energy beverages, premium bottled water, and revitalizer shots. 
Cintron is the official energy drink of the Red Wings, proud partners with Detroit Pistons, and exclusively served at Little Caesars Arena. If you're looking for premium ingredients, long-lasting energy, balanced hydration, essential vitamins, and great taste, Cintron is your top choice. Buy online at CintronWorld.com. Use this promo code REDWINGS10. Save 10% with shipping included. Drink it, live it with Cintron. Fellas, football season is here. It's time to make your grooming experience easy like Sunday morning. Get to Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men. Walk in, relax, watch your favorite team play, and before you know it, your hair will be game ready. Get to Lady Jane's, open 10 to 8, 7 days a week. Walk in anytime. It's wicked awesome. Hi, I'm Kay Cunningham. I'm proud to partner with Hall Financial, the mortgage company known for five-star service. Don't just take my word for it. Check out their 5,000 five-star reviews for yourself. Go to callhallfirst.com and get started with your five-star experience today. Your Detroit alternative to the normal sports blah, blah, blah. It's Woodward Sports. All right, Corey, I got to ask you, what more can be said about Matthew Stafford moving forward? What else is there? I think the book, the chapter is closed on Detroit. Clearly, they are pathetic, a pathetic, putrid franchise. I don't think anything else can be said at this point. The fact that you can't build around a franchise quarterback and deliver one year that the Rams have done this year. And don't tell me about all the Hall of Famers he has. What, Von Miller aging? Who's played very well, don't get me wrong. But they acquired him midseason. OBJ midseason. Cam Akers I don't be- care I'm how so many Hall of, of Famers he's playing with. That's the point. Yeah, that's the they p- went all yes. in. Yes, they that's went the all damn in. Point. You're supposed to stack. Okay, one of the lines. The, done the, it. Okay, I got a, I got a question. Did anybody did anybody complain when the Detroit Red Wings stacked that roster and won that ship, Mm-mm. won that Stanley Cup? Nope. Nobody here complained. Everybody loved the hell out of it. Because if, if you win, because you win. that was the point. Yeah. You stacked the damn roster to win. You went out there and got all those guys. It's like Golden State when they were winning in the NBA. We like, to, you, you I, I mean, it. who does not want to play with more talent? Who does not want to see their hometown team have the best talent? Mm-hmm. All of this, well, he had to go play with this. He had to go play with that guy. Okay, and? Oh, what's the what, – what, who who was out there winning titles with scrubs? Tom Brady name do? a name a championship team that has scrubs on it. That doesn't have a goal. that doesn't have talent. That doesn't have a great coach. It doesn't exist. There is no championship team in history that was Wait, one with scrubs. Where Tom Brady go? Tom Brady went to a stack roster. What happened? They won. That's the point. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he didn't win when he went undefeated, but that was an anomaly at that year. I, I, mean, I do yeah. want to throw this out there. Totally off subject. I'm sorry. In nine minutes, we get we're we're honored to have Chris Castellani from Barstool yeah. joining. I love Chris, such a yeah. great guy. Chris is, yeah, he's the uh, man. Excited to have him on. He wrote an article actually on Matthew Stafford. It's a great read. I do recommend all of you going and listening, or not listening, uh, reading it. It's very yeah. good. But back to the Stafford saga, Corey. That is absolutely the point. You could never build a contending team. You never had a front office that had the gall to trade seven straight years of first round picks. You never had a head coach that could sniff the jock strap of Sean McVay. And you're seeing it in front of you. It's all there. Just learn from it. I also, th- I also do think it is an indictment on the Lions for one thing. I mean, we can, I believe that Stafford did have opportunities here to win. Here's the problem. The Lions did not keep those key yeah, players. They never went all in. They let them all walk out the door. Mm-hmm. So he, it was... There was one player, I'm not going to say his name, there was one former Lions player I talked to, and he said, after 2014, when they let everybody go, I knew it was a wrap. We were effed. Yep. It was over. What did Aaron Rodgers come out and say, I don't want to be a part of a rebuild? What did Tom Brady say? I don't want to be a part of a rebuild, basically, is what he said. Yeah. Now, welcome to the NFL. You're going to criticize Mahomes for having uh, Kelsey and uh, Tyreek Hill? <laughs> no, you're not. Oh, but you know what's the best part of all this? Is that the Lions felt they were an Eric Ebron away from going to the Super Bowl <laughs> instead of picking a player that could maul the quarterback. But you mean like Aaron Donald? That's beyond me. That's beyond me. Uh, Corey, next question. Uh, I believe this NFL weekend proved why the Lions should not draft Kyle Hamilton. And honestly, I want to get into it in more detail on Tuesday, but I just want to bring it up just so I can get it out there because I don't want anybody going out <laughs> and saying that, oh, I, I, I want to be the first one to bring this up. Sundays, Saturday and Sunday's games are why you don't take a safety at number two. 
Antoine Winfield got beat by Cooper Cup deep. <laughs> Kevin Byard made no impact. Granted, it was a low-scoring game. But the point is, you need a quarterback, you need wide receivers, and you need to be able to put up points. That's today's NFL. You know why the Tennessee Titans are, are watching at home now? Because they don't have a quarterback. What do the four remaining teams have? They have quarterbacks. And don't talk to me about Jimmy Garoppolo. He has almost a 73% winning record, uh, winning percentage record in the NFL. I don't want to hear about Jimmy G. He, mean, he may not put up all the numbers you like, but yeah. he's no game manager. But that, he plays the game of football at an elite level. Yeah, his two-minute drill is ridiculous. He's I mean, amazing in the two-minute yeah. drill. He comes up when you need him. Yes, he overthrew the ball in the Super Bowl. We all remember. But the point is, the guy's been to two NFC title games. He's no game manager. They run a highly intellectual run offense any quarterback can play. No, not any quarterback can play in it. He's hyper successful in it. And when his team needed him most, Kittle, Debo Samuel, Kittle. Yep, Debo went down. Samuel, they go up and win the game on a field goal. I don't want to hear it. The four teams that are in the championship games all have very good quarterbacks to great quarterbacks. Welcome to the new NFL. Corey, do you take Kyle Hamilton at number two? <laughs> Hell no. Hell no. I love it. Just. I love you. Why? I love you. Yeah. I mean, if you were, I love you. If you're gonna trade, if you trade, I wouldn't even trade. I wouldn't even trade back. I, back to pick it all. But if you were to trade back and you get like some impressive haul, mm -hmm. I'd consider it. But you're probably gonna have Thibodeau right there at number two. Right. And if you trade back, I would. I would like Nicobe Dean. I and like, like Nicobe Dean. There's. Trey Flowers is probably on his way out, mm -hmm. I'm assuming. Yep. They might bring him back, I don't know, but let's assume Trey Flowers is on his way out. You're going to need an edge rusher. Thibodeau's the guy. I've seen the tape. Yeah. Go, if you haven't seen the tape, go look at him. I've seen Ada Hutchinson, too. If Thibodeau's at number two, he will be a complete problem in that defense. The way they sell out, the way they're aggressive. Mm -hmm. You don't need how much of the number two. And also, too, I'm just going to be honest, and this is me putting the fan hat on. I have PTSD from taking a DB that high. I'm sorry. Can Not I alone. throw you one more thing? We, we have a few minutes. So one more thing. Corey, what is, the, what is the easiest way to negate an opposing team that has a great quarterback? Come again. What is the easiest way or the most effective way to get to a quarterback on an opposing team where they have a Mahomes, an Allen, a Brady, a Rodgers. Oh, have a, having a dynamic front line and having a well, dynamic edge rusher. Wow. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like everybody in, you know, everybody I talk to, it feels like they understand this, except some of the idiots I have to deal with every day. And apparently the Fords and all the GMs in lines recent history. Tom I mean, Brady looks human when he... He lost two Super Bowls. No, actually three. Brandon Graham did a hell of a job for the yeah, Eagles. Yeah, but like any time he put a any hat on Brady, he, he, I mean, as great as Brady is, any time you can get to him, he gets rattled. Any quarterback. Any, but any quarterback. So. Any quarterback, even Aaron Rodgers got happy feet, which is why he threw the ball downfield in double coverage instead of finding Adam Lazard over the middle, who was wide open, probably would have went for 40, 50 yards. Yeah. That's why. That's why edge rushers get paid the money they get. And you know what the Rams did? That the Lions would never do, even if they had Aaron Donald. They lined him up at left end against a replacement tackle. Yeah, schematically. And they blitzed the linebacker multiple times to set up Aaron Donald one -on -one. in one-on-one -on -one situations. My goodness, the defensive masterclass. Raheem Morris? Yep, Raheem I Morris. I hope you get a job. I really do. I you earned yourself a job for the turnaround you gave. The Rams, after they were awful midway into the season on defense, you acquired Von Miller. You brought Eric Waddle, and you're missing Taylor Rapp, and you put out a good defensive performance. Raheem Morris, cheers to you, my friend. Now, I, did, I do see people in the chat saying that um, we did draft, you know, some linemen, you know, like Sue, Ansa. Yeah, we let him walk. Um, fairly. That, that's um, we let Cliff him walk. Averill. But again, like you said, like I said, one of the players I talked to, they let the great they talent invested. walk out the door. Yeah. Cliff Averill walked out the door. Went to Went, Seattle and damn near became Super Bowl MVP. Yep. They didn't acquire more. It doesn't talent. matter. It doesn't matter if you draft the talent and you don't keep them. Yeah, and you got to acquire more talent. They got Von Miller, Leonard Floyd. I mean, they just, Rams are just different. That's the argument we've been hammering on all show. It's just like organizationally, it's just we're talking. I, about I, but I will say this: I think that right now that the tide has changed is because, and I know that Sheila Ford, she got 
criticized for this pretty harshly, but she's brought in football minds to make decisions that she's not comfortable making, that she doesn't Good. that she doesn't know how to make, I'm assuming, and that's what a smart person does if you're running a business. Hey, you know what? I'm going to hire somebody smarter than me in this area mm -hmm. to handle this so that I don't look like yeah. a fool. I think that's brilliant. You don't know what you don't know. Yeah. I don't mind. Look, this yeah. ha by the way, the last hour and 10 minutes of me ranting has nothing to do with the current Lions front it's, office it's all pre. and head coach. Yeah, yeah. Please, please understand that. Let's let's like get make that very clear. Yeah, I, I think, but I think it's warranted. They it's frust it's frustrating when you're a fan when you're a fan and you watch in in one playoff, you see the Bengals get two wins and you see Matthew Stafford get two. As a fan, as a Lions fan, I'm it's pretty sure it's, 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 it's and very thinking, frustrating. And I'm thinking about all the people who can't afford to go to games, right? And even the people that do, they pay, they spend their hard earned money. To go watch the product you put out on the field every day, and you deliver them nothing. I'm not asking for a super, a super Bowl. Give me a division every three years. Hell, four years. Give me something where I can see we're going in the right direction. The Lions have never done that. We got to go to break. Corey, I love you, man. Thank you for joining us this morning. Hey, I didn't plan it. I was still over here knocking out the coffee. You called me in. I seen the shades. I seen the rosé. I seen the feet kicked up. I'm like, all right, this is about to be interesting. I got a cigar for you if you want to try it. Uh, I mean, we'll smoke. We'll light one up after the show. Right, I'm with it. Uh, we got to go to break. Let's see. Ah. <laughs> ah. I got to tell you guys about my bookie. My bookie is the premier place to be betting, and it is where I bet a nice chunk of change on the Rams money line. And let's just say I'm a very happy person this morning. Woodward Sports will <laughs> get lunch or dinner on me. That is a fact. But from anywhere, anytime, using my bookie, and make sure you sign up today using code Woodward. They'll match you dollar for dollar. Don't miss the NFL playoffs, guys. Come on, we're in the AFC and NFC title games now. Take advantage of it. Sign up today, and if you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-270-7117. Six dark corners, a driveway and a patio, five windows that could become doors. Every house has unique security challenges. Guardian Alarm has more tech, more team, and more ways to help keep them all safe. Get a professionally designed and installed security and smart home system from Guardian Alarm. Sign up today and get a free video device. Guardian Alarm. Smart. Right from the start. Call 1-800-STAY-OUT. Live from Woodward Avenue. That's why we are called Woodward Sports. The Twins Radio Sports Network. Ladies and gentlemen, boy, do we have a special surprise for you. Chris Castellini from Barstool Sports is joining us this morning. Chris, if I may, first, good morning, my friend. How are you? I I'm so glad to be seeing you this morning. I really am. I'm doing good, man. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Chris, let me start with this. You wrote an article last yep. night, which I thoroughly enjoyed, mm -hmm. titled Matthew Stafford's Playoff Success is Further Proof That the Detroit Lions Are the Worst Organization in the History of Sports. Ah, now, not only it. do I agree with it, Chris, but first, kind of walk me through, one, how you came about the idea to write it. Walk me through, you know, what, what was the point you were trying to get across with this article? I thought it's a fantastic read, by the way. But Thank your you. feelings as a Detroiter, yep. what went well, into this here's, article? Here's the thing, man. I've been very hush hush this whole season because, yeah, I, look, I, anyone with a brainstem knows Stafford was going to have a good year. Like, he was going to go out there and ball because he's with a competent organization and a good scheme, great coach. But the regular season, was, regular season was almost irrelevant here because let's say, let's say last Monday, Stafford would have gone out there against Arizona and laid an egg and they would have lost. All those narratives about him not being a big game quarterback, not being a guy who can win in the postseason. Uh, would have been justified. So what mattered was what he did in the postseason. And you see what – he's been great. I, like, I know the the uh, the first game, you know, he only threw 17 passes, but he's he's been excellent. And the, the throw to Cup in the fourth quarter, the game-winning pass yesterday, that was, that was a career-defining moment for him. So you look at those 12 years that they had with Stafford, and it completely uh, – it becomes an even more bitter pill to swallow knowing they had their guy. I mean, they had their guy for a dozen years. And I think you were, you were 
kind of talking about it last segment where you said, like, just give me a division title once every three years. And that, that's kind of where I stand with it, where let's say that Stafford um, in his 12 years in Detroit won four playoff games, went to the NFC Championship twice, never went to a Super Bowl. I don't think that anyone would be viewing his tenure as this math at this mm-hmm. point. But mm-hmm. the fact is, in his 12 years there, they had one team capable of winning a playoff game. Like, I know they went there a few times. 2014 was the only team they had that where you looked at it and went, okay, this team can go to Dallas and win. Now, because they got hosed, I think there's some revisionist history. Like, I do not believe they would have gone to Seattle the next week and beat the Legion of Boom, like when Seattle was really rolling, coming off of that Super Bowl uh, victory uh, the year before. But, let, like, let's break that down. We're talking 12 years with a generational quarterback, and your ceiling was a team capable of winning a playoff game. The Bengals in year two under Burrow, and the Bengals were, have been a mess for yeah. a decade, have won yeah. two in the last two weeks. So I, that's that's what really where my disappointment came from, is that like I'm happy for Stafford, and I'm going to continue to be. And now, now, I didn't expect to get to this point. Now I'm there like, win next week, win the whole thing. Like, just... I am usually not like this, but yeah, stick the knife in a little bit more. Like, to be, I'm, I'm, I've reached that point with him, and I'm usually not like that. But seeing how he's played this season, and I've gotten, I've for the most part, people agree with me, but I have gotten those comments of people being like, "Well, he got traded to a top five team, <laughs> we, we have a top two. five coach," and oh. <laughs> you're proving my point. This, yeah, was, yep. this didn't take, this didn't take two or three years to get going, guys. Right. In year the second he left Detroit. He became a Super Bowl caliber quarterback. <laughs> right. Like, it, it wasn't like Peyton Man- What was it? Year eight, nine for Peyton Manning with yep, in Indianapolis yep. where they finally got to a Super Bowl. Year one in Los Angeles. And I look, never say never, but they're gonna win next week. Like I, I, I know Shanahan's excellent, and I know that scheme has given them some fits, and they've beaten Los Angeles twice. They're not losing uh, three times. Been, I'm with you, Chris. But that's uh, I'm there too. They're not gonna they're not gonna go into Los Angeles and win and beat them three. You know, for the third time. So. This is only going to get worse, and you know what? Good for him, because my hope is that an example like this uh, shakes the organization out of, I mean, this this 60-year rut uh, that they've been in. Because, uh, like, knowing, and I said in the article, the only thing worse than having no talent is having talent and wasting it. And that's what they did with a, a generational quarterback for 12 years. Absolutely. Chris, you know what? I, I do want to shift a little bit to Justin Verlander. Justin mm-hmm. Verlander, this was never the talk when he was given away to Houston. And why? Because right. Verlander had taken us to a World Series. Right. He had won mm-hmm. big games, closeout games in the playoffs, delivered ALCS. He was an MVP and Cy Young winner. That's yeah. why Verlander was allowed to leave and nobody said it. Oh, single word. And people comparing him to Verlander, no, it's not even close. Verlander was supported by the Tigers. Stafford never was with Detroit. And that kind of brings me yeah. to this next question. What the hell is going on in baseball? Are we going to get baseball? Well, I'm cur- dying cur- here. Currently, nothing is going on because they got – I mean, yep. I, I'm i getting the same flashbacks I got to the COVID year two years ago. I mean, I don't – first of all, I, I don't understand – why they do these negotiations by like fucking carrier pigeon. I don't, I don't get why like every two weeks, um, we, we get a n- negotiations like continuing, like this should be something that happens like every, I don't know. It drives me nuts. I know it's, it's a scary time because, um, at least two years ago, you could make the excuse that nobody knew what the hell was going on with COVID. Nobody really, you know, it, we were in uncharted waters. Now I still maintain that 60 game season was kind of pathetic. I mean, that's the equivalent of, what, six NFL games? Like, would you be comfortable crowning a champion, a Super Bowl champion, when they played six games? Like, I don't think so. Um, But now we're at a point with these negotiations where they're meeting today. Um, I don't have any faith currently in what's – in in the way that this is going to go. I think that this is going to be another staring contest, and either the owners or players will break the second they realize that they're about to lose games. And I hate doing that. I hate being that cynical. But um, by all accounts, the first – meeting which happened in 2021 there was 42 days in between negotiations like what are you doing but i i don't have any faith in it at this point i'm really worried about losing games i'm worried about losing a lot of games because this is something that's happened before and it's something that happened recently yes they finished the covid year and they crowned a champion but 
they played 60 games when they could have played upwards of 100. I mean, I, I worry about uh, the current standing <clears throat> of the sport and where things will end up um, if this thing doesn't get resolved and we don't play a full season. Well, number one, thank you for joining us, Chris. I want to get that uh, out of the way. And of then course, also, yeah, another, another thing, I can't let you get out of here without asking about the Tigers. So uh, I want to ask yeah. you about the Tigers. Spring training over a little over a month away. You got Javi Rodriguez, now a part of the Detroit Tigers. Uh, players still developing. Give me your before-the-season expectations and things you'll be looking for uh, from a Tigers fan perspective. Yeah, I've maintained with this team uh, since the Baez signing the belief that I think they're going to be good. And by good, I mean I believe that they'll be over 500, and I believe by the end of the year, uh, assuming there isn't a postseason expansion, which there very there could be, mm -hmm. uh, they'll be within striking distance of a wild card spot. I, I mean, I look at this current roster, which won 77 games a year ago, and yeah, look, did they break the bank maybe the way that people wanted them to with a $300 million deal? No, but what's your number one goal with any team in the offseason? Make that team better. So you take a 77-win team, and you add Barnhart, and you add Erod, and you add uh, you know uh, you add Baez, and all of a sudden I'm looking at a team that can improve upon that win total and be pretty darn competitive this year. I, I mean that's the, the I think right now, um, kind of against all odds because two years ago I mean this thing was off the rails. <laughs> I'm looking I, I mean I'm looking at a, a front office that's done a serviceable job of supplementing this young roster. Uh, with talent, they have, I mean, they fell into the best manager in baseball, in AJ. Mm -hmm, they have a, a, they have a phenomenal pitching coach in Chris Fetter, um, and, and really that's that's been, I think, the biggest turnaround. I think that's why last year's team weirdly, weirdly kind of connected with people was you saw a change in regards to preparation and culture. I mean, that, that's AJ's big thing, and I love him for it. It's like we can win today and we can win tomorrow, and they. They did a good job last season of bouncing back from some ugly losses, some ugly series. The last four months of the season, they were an 85 win. They played at an 85 win pace. Like mm. that, that should excite you for the future because mm -hmm. guess what? I think they're better now. Now the health will will obviously play a big part in it. Um, there is an expectation that these young guys are going to take big steps forward. Who knows if they will? Some guys develop differently than others. You know, I understand that, but um, I'm. I'm at a point now where there we finally have expectations. Tanking is done, you know. Going for draft picks, you know, you got to draft well, obviously, but that's done. You you got to win games now. That's what you brought in AJ for, and I'm um, I'm excited again. I I I think that this will be a good baseball team. I'm, I'm with you 100, percent Chris. I actually think they win the pennant this year. I think they win the central. I really do. Wow. And I hope there's baseball. I... I'm I mean, there dude, already, that would man. Be amazing. <laughs> He's drinking the Kool Aid, Chris. Love... Look what I'm wearing this morning, would, Chris. Look... My my confidence is through the roof. I've never dressed like this. <laughs> my wife you. looked at me in, in sheer disgust this morning. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, man. I dude, I get you. I think it's a team that's capable of being really competitive. Um, I still think the White Sox, from a talent standpoint, are substantially better. But um, I, you know, history I hope repeats itself because we're due for an 06 caliber like turnaround. You know where. Uh, you look at that 06 team and the way they were able to turn things around. I hope, I, man, I'm ready for it. I think, but I, I, I'm keeping my expectations at bay. To me, like, wild card spot, that's the ceiling. And then I would say, really, 23 is the year where you look at it and go, okay, now we're talking pennant. Now we're talking World Series. Now we're talking, you know, being a team that can be one of the last teams standing. I still think there's too many holes on the roster, and there's too many question marks regarding the young talent for me to be all in saying this is a championship caliber team, this is a division winning team. But I'll I'll say it till the you know until proven otherwise. I think they're going to be good. Chris, I'm so glad you brought that up. But are there any moves they can make, especially with the lockout conversation going right. on right now? Is there anything they can add or will add before the season starts? Or is this what we just need to expect and we probably get, what, a 45, 60-day period once the season starts before they call up Torkelson and Riley Green? Mm -hmm. Well, right now there's nothing you can do. I mean, that's the, the rules of the lockout currently is you can't, I mean, you can't sign anybody. Free agency, is, it's a dead period. I would guess if and when this thing ends, uh, they're going to be – they're, they're going to want to sign another starting pitcher. And, and one guy that I've honed in on, he's he's older now. I mean, he's past his prime. But you look at this this current staff. You have Mize, you have Manning, you have Scooball. Three 
great prospects, but three guys who, in my opinion, um, are, are probably going to have their in innings monitored at some point. They're very young. And then you have Eduardo Rodriguez, who's a very good pitcher. I like that signing a lot. Has also had some injury problems. I think what they're going to try to do is hone in on a guy who can give them innings. And one person that I think is still capable of doing that uh, is Zach Greinke. 38 years old, um, not what he used to be, not the Cy Young winner he was in Kansas City, not you know the ERA champion that he was in Los Angeles, but you know 170 innings last year uh, for the Astros, which I believe would have led the Tigers had he have been on that staff. Um, I think they're going to make a move, a smaller deal, one- or two-year deal for somebody like that. I think their biggest signing is past them. Baez was their big move. Erod was obviously the five-year deal. Um, I think that next step is probably – um, bolstering the rotation a little bit more, getting a guy who can give you those six innings a night. Um, and then I would say the, the this offseason will be complete in terms of acquisitions. But I don't believe they're done. It's just, unfortunately, there's nothing they can do currently given the uh, the lockout situation. All right. Well, Chris, I can't really thank you enough. I uh, would yeah. love to have you back sometime before spring ball. Got to. Uh, stay good. Stay healthy. You look really good. Uh, I hope you're thank doing you. great. I hope you're enjoying the bar stool gig. I hope it's treating you well. Uh, so happy for you, buddy. Thanks for uh, thanks for joining us this morning. Of course, guys. Yeah, anytime. Thanks for having me. Yeah. All right. Everybody, that's Chris Castellani, Barstool Sports. Give him a follow He's if you great, haven't already. Man. He is unbelievable. Love him. Isn't he? He's a great guy, man. He, and he, humble, very knowledgeable. Humble guy. I mean, honestly, like, just one of those people you root for, and I'm so happy for him. I really am. And I'm, I'm glad I took him by surprise when I told him I, I think the Tigers will win the Central. <laughs> yeah, I love, I love it. I, it's I kinda, love it. It's kind of ironic that I'm the one in the room drinking too much. Right, right, right. You've been staying off it all season. Oh, man. Well, we got to go to break. Oh, goodness. When we get back, what do we got? What do we got after Chris? We got to talk about the Bills-Chiefs game. My oh, God. my God. Sorry, Tennessee, Cincy. I'm sorry. We got to skip you. Yeah. Well, we have all week. We got to talk about the Bills and Chiefs. But before we do, I got to tell you about Planet Fitness, the ultimate judgment-free zone. Let me tell you, you want to get 2022 off to the right start. I know we're almost done with January, but guys, taking your physical and mental health is essential. Get your body in shape. You'll feel better about yourself. You'll be more effective, productive, efficient throughout your day. Your fitness is essential. Sign up today, zero down, $10 a month for Planet Fitness, and maybe you can look like me. We'll see you guys after the break. Life is full of hard choices. We're here to make one of life's biggest decisions as simple as possible. My name is Christina Gennari, and for over 20 years, I've helped hundreds of families buy and sell homes. We cover all of Metro Detroit and more, from large luxury homes to starter homes. We will work hard to make sure that you get the home of your dreams. So if you're in the market today or even thinking about buying or selling in the future, make the obvious choice. Christina Gennari, the obvious choice in real estate. Visit us at soldchristina.com today. everywhere just search woodward sports on youtube facebook twitter twitch ig and more and more and more and more and more welcome back to the morning woodward show can we get a hour has, and 28 minute in update of how you're feeling like how, how's the mood are you doing hour great 28 and honestly yep. i've never felt better i've never felt better there's only one thing stopping me from opening up this gypsy vodka right now and chugging it. And what is that? My sanity. Oh, I was thinking, okay. I don't think I can handle alcohol this morning. But I can handle coffee. Thank you, Birmingham Roast, by the way. I can drink coffee this week. I forgot. You have to thank someone else. Don Burr. There I we go. You. Thank you for always supporting the morning show and being in the chat. Can't thank you enough. Oh, man. Let's talk about the Bills and Chiefs. Jeff, I'll let you do the honors. Walk me through what was... I, look, me and you have young lives, all right? I could argue the most entertaining game I've ever watched in my life. Yeah. Are we on the same page? I'd agree with you. I'd agree with you. I picked the Chiefs Walk to win. Walk me through it. Walk me through I, it. I picked the Chiefs to win the game, obviously, but I did not expect it to go like that. And I learned one thing from watching the Chiefs on Sunday. I, I thought to myself, 13 seconds is too long. It's, it's too long for these two, both of these guys. I mean, if you gave Josh Allen 13 seconds, it probably would have been the same result. Two of the most, this is a Peyton Manning, Tom Brady-esque duel. Like, these guys are the future of the league, especially for us. Like, two young quarterbacks, guys with cannon arms. I and mean, you saw Josh Allen, Gabe Davis. 
How do they have four touchdowns, over 200 yards? Guy balled. And the Bills, I got a feel for them in a way because this was the year to, to get over that hump, to finally beat the Chiefs. And now I did pick the Chiefs. Yes, I did. But I wouldn't be surprised if the Bills won. I said that. And Josh Allen, he put in the work. He's a great – he's a god. That guy, what he's able to do, they have designed quarterback runs. And what he's able to do with his arm, with his legs – he is going to be a problem for years to come. So that's really what I took from it. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say, can the Bills get over the hump? I think they, honestly, they should have. And we'll talk about the overtime thing. I mean, Josh Allen deserves a shot to touch the ball. I think we all learned that. If he gets that ball in overtime, he's probably scoring. So, Did you notice karma this weekend, or was that just me? What, what karma? Do you remember when Tom Brady, after that horrible yes. offsides call, yes. scored a touchdown, they go to overtime, Brady wins the toss, mm-hmm. Mahomes never gets to touch the ball? And then now it's vice versa. Vice versa. <laughs> <laughs> Look, who honestly, th- one, the games are not rigged. Let's start there. But number two, huh? 13 seconds left. It's too much time. I literally looked to the side of me. I was watching the game. With it's a too good much time. Mine, and I told them they're going to score. Why? Because one, I bet on the Bills. And two, I had the Bills winning the Super Bowl. But three, and most importantly, you never count out Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid. And what did they do? They deliver. And Tyreek Hill. You saw Tyreek and Kelsey and all unbelievable, that. Unbelievable, Jeff. Yeah. I've never witnessed such a crazy ending to a football game in my life. But does since it was obviously one of the greatest football games you've ever witnessed, does that game alone help kind of push that narrative of the overtime, how it needs to be fixed? Okay, you it, know, it, a lot of people are talking about that this morning, and I do understand the frustration. Josh Allen should have a chance to touch the ball, et cetera, et cetera. I, I, I won't say you're wrong for feeling that way. But I get why they don't. But I get why it is the way it is. Yeah. If you want to change it, I'm for it. I would love to see how a college football style or... But, guys, what do you do? Or do I dare say you implement the NHL rules in the playoffs for the entire season? Excuse me. For the regular season, games end in ties with the same uh, setup now. Deal? But in the playoffs, they continue to play 10 to 15-minute quarters until the game is decided. Meaning both teams touch the ball. If a team gets a field goal and the other team doesn't score, game over. If the team scores a field goal and the other team scores a touchdown, game over. If the team scores a touchdown and the other team scores and goes for two and doesn't get it, well, the game's over. And they get it, game over. I'm for playoff NHL-style rules, except, you know, one goal doesn't decide it. Both teams touch the ball, basically, in a full overtime matchup. Fish? Do we like it in the regular season? Huh? Do we like the overtime rules in the regular season? Just I don't know how I feel about the, it in the regular season. Maybe, yeah. I mean, you can try it, but I think that's the solution. Yeah. You run constant overtimes until the game is decided. Well, they do that, and Could- they do that in the playoffs. They just do the same rule where the team scores a touchdown, they win. But if if the Chiefs were not to score, the Bills were not to score, they uh, keep it going. Crap! I owe Weez two thousand dollars. That's right. But fish, I, I, the the problem I have is, is you're going to dictate a winner in overtime, probably based off coin toss. I mean, the, the Chiefs, if the Bills won that coin toss, would we be having a different conversation? Maybe. Well, but, if they scored a touchdown. Right, right. But I'm, I'm assuming they did. I mean, you saw the last yeah. couple minutes. But Both if, teams couldn't were scoring back and but forth. But if they just kept kicking field goals after 15 minutes, they would have extended it to another 15 and right. another 15 and another 15. Right. And that's kind of the problem. I mean, listen, will the NFL change the overtime rule? No, nope. uh, Probably not. I think they should. They should. I think they it's should. worth the conversation to at least look at it. I mean, come on. You, Josh but either Allen. way, even if they didn't change the rules, you can't tell me you didn't thoroughly enjoy watching that football game. Oh, yeah. It doesn't take away anything. I mean. <laughs> or do you feel bad for Josh Allen? You should feel more bad that his defense gave up 60 yards in two plays. Yeah. With 13 seconds left. Both, both defenses were gassed. Gassed, man. Kyle Hamilton, right? Yeah. I should draft him in two. Yeah. He would have made a difference, right? right? Come on, guys. Yeah. It's today's NFL. Uh, I, I love that sticks in the chat. I, I, I what do you want, say? I just want to bring this up because it's worth the convo. I love it. Watching Stafford Slappy celebrate something that Goff did in a Rams uniform is, a, is hilarious. Sam, Sam, Sam I I'll tell you what. Poor Stafford fans bar us so low. Sam, you know what? I'm not even going to acknowledge your comment. You can you can go sit with all the other Stafford Slappies. You you're beneath me today. I <laughs> told you, Adam. You're beneath me. You're beneath me. <laughs> what did Sam, I tell you at the start? No, no, don't even read the comments. I'm not I, even, I, no, no. I love this response. We're not though. even gonna acknowledge Look, these type of comments on the show. Look, he said Stafford fans remind me of a high school kid who just touched his first boob. Thinks he's the man when he's only halfway yeah, there. Yeah, is this, stick, is this you know stick? What? We're not, everybody. We're gonna stop. We're not is even that the gonna guy acknowledge. That loves his We're high not school? gonna acknowledge the uh, the saltiness, the the pettiness. 
I love the We're comparison. not going to acknowledge it on the show today. Yeah. Today, today we have a vibe. <laughs> no one's killing it. That's for after the show. We're going to move on. <laughs> we'll argue with them. We're going to uh, move on. I love that, that analogy, though. But let's get back to the game. Yeah. G Gabriel Davis had four touchdowns. Yeah, what the hell could, was that? You know why, though? Partially, and I, I don't blame the Chiefs for this. We know the Chiefs' secondary struggles, and, and they decided, listen, we're going to double Stefan. You're not going to beat us with Stefan. Well, guess what? You're putting one-on-one -on -one matchups with Gabriel Davis, and he won pretty much every one-on-one -on -one matchup they put on him. So uh, it was a problem, man. Four touchdowns, 200 yards. Every time I watch the playoffs and I watch the Bills, Davis shows up. I don't, that's just the constant thing. You don't really see him during the regular season a whole lot. And then all of a sudden, the playoffs, the guy goes for 200 yards and four touchdowns. So, I mean, listen, I want to sit here and critique one. You can't really critique either team. Like, what am I going to do? You can't crap on Sean McDermott. I mean, the guy, the, the Bills, yes, defensively, you could have changed a few things. But the Chiefs defense wasn't looking too good either. It came down to a coin toss. And the Chiefs won it. Went down in overtime and won the game. So that's what it came down to. And, and as NFL fans, you just got to live with it. But doesn't take away. It was probably the most entertaining game I've ever witnessed. So loved it, man. Great weekend. We were blessed with a lot we of games. We have a few minutes. So let's move on to games. Tennessee, Cincinnati. Tennessee. What'd you make of it? It was a low scoring game. Low scoring game. Well fought, but. Yeah. In the end, the, the better quarterback prevailed, even though he was sacked nine times. It, it was. And, and listen, if you watched that game, you saw it. Tannehill, some of his passes were dropped um, and, and tipped up, and that's what led to the interceptions. But bottom line, I'm impressed with Cincinnati. You had Derrick Henry returning. And say what you want about Derrick Henry and his health, it's Derrick frickin' Henry. That's a grown-ass man running at you. And I was expecting him to you know, be too much for the Bengals. They lost Larry uh, Unjanobi. I can't really pronounce his name, but he was their starting defensive tackle, their run stopper, clogger, and he's out. So I was expecting Derrick to run all over the Bengals. Didn't happen. And the Bengals defensively they showed up and i'm excited so excited for a rematch Bengals versus chiefs Bengals deserve it man and, and it says a lot about the organization zach taylor we had questions last year about is zach taylor the right coach and joe burrow comes back and look what happens when you have a great quarterback makes the coach look even better and that's the whole point so joe burrow magnificent job i mean listen you want to talk they took about care of business. setting the bar low stick Oh God! It took Jim Caldwell's the greatest <laughs> head coach in Detroit Lions history. Yeah! Did you say we weren't acknowledging losers? <laughs> losers. The guy leaves for one season and you still won't admit it. You still won't admit that it's your pathetic franchise. Really, stick. That's what you look. I get it. You can't admit you were wrong. I got it. You couldn't admit you were wrong when I was right about the Steelers last season. I, I get yeah. it. You can never admit you're wrong, and that's why I don't even want to address it. But I can't, just can't help. How wrong you are, and you still just can't admit it. The guy's won more playoff games in eight days than your franchise has in 58 years. He's 2-0 since leaving Detroit in the playoffs. In his first five seasons, full seasons, he led you to three playoff appearances. Your team went in the tank after because they wouldn't sign anybody. But it's Matthew Stafford that's the problem, right, Stick? I'm setting the bar low. Dude's hosting an NFC Championship game. Have the Lions ever hosted an NFC Championship game? No, they haven't. No, they haven't. Have it. Enjoy that, buddy. You're going to get angry at me, Adam, because I want to touch it. on Jim Caldwell You're for a few seconds. You're not owning space in my head. I'm acknowledging you in the chat, dude. You wish you owned. Nobody owns a single damn thing in my mind today. I am, I am in a whole different atmosphere. I have reached a level of consciousness that some of you dream of this morning. Where I'm, I'm higher than a ma you know what. You can't touch me today. I am on one. No. I am so high. Hold up. on. I am so high right now. I don't even. I don't, I don't want. To, I don't want to do this. Right I now. want to do it. I, I want Why? to do it. I think this, this is, is great. The, we got to go to break though. Give After me one break. second. We got to go to break. After when break. we get back, Sam Day has walked into the studio. <laughs> Give a little Stick taste. Here. Give how, a little how, taste. How, how timely. Or, I respect a man who comes in. We got to go to break. When we get back, Sam Day joins us. Let's see how this goes. But I got to tell you about Gypsy Vodka. Gypsy Vodka is the smoothest tasting vodka on the market. If it wasn't 9 o'clock in the morning, I would be chugging this thing right now, but I have to remember I have work after this, <laughs> so here we are. Try it today. Ask for it by the name of Gypsy, and please, ladies and gentlemen, as always, drink responsibly. Okay, you thirsty little spin goblins. I want you to pedal into the next dimension. Spin it! Spin! Spin! Uh-oh! Carmen's falling behind. Let's give her the hiss of shame. Spin! Spin! You Don't ride the bike of shame. Come to Planet Fitness and find your own lane with tons of equipment, free fitness training, and no hissing. Join today for just $10 a month.
Opinions are like ear holes, and we're putting ours in yours. Well, that's not winning, Joy. It's Hollywood Sports. I I can't believe it. Not only do we have the sh- oh, I don't want to make Justin work harder. Not only do we have the crap talker in the chat commenting his his nothingness, we have him in studio. He went We are joined by Sam Day, my good friend Stick. Stick. Defend yourself. Well, what more is there to say, buddy? Wait, is this how we're sitting today doing the show? <laughs> is, this, is this what we're doing? We're showing everybody? <laughs> no, but come on, man. You're going to come in here, act like you, Stafford won a Super Bowl last you night. You keep changing it every week. He needs no, to be the I have not first. changed it. You could go back to my tweets last week. You said to me, Stafford he needed, let's must see him win throw, a Let's see Super him throw 17, uh, 17 no. times against uh, no, no. Tampa Bay. No, no. He did, baby. and he dominated. Baby, baby, now baby. what? Baby, slow down. Slow down. Now what? <laughs> slow, slow down. down. The whole point of them giving up what they did for Matthew Stafford was to win a Super Bowl. It wasn't to get to an NFC championship game. It wasn't to almost blow a 27-3 to lead. It wasn't all of that. Yeah. It was to win a Super Bowl. And that's hence my comment in the chats. You're halfway there. Congratulations. Good job. Stafford's doing well. I'll give him that. And I've always said, best quarterback to ever play in Detroit. Always giving him his roses on that end. But... You're really gonna sit up here. You're really put on gonna sit up there and say you've Jared given him Goff his roses. Did with this damn team. When all, yeah, Jared Goff threw one touchdown that whole Super Bowl run. Just so you know, Mr. Jared Goff. But Got anyways. him to the Super Bowl. That's all that matters. Oh yeah, yeah, all I that know. Matters. It changes every week with you guys. No, it Don't doesn't. Worry. Go Don't back, worry. check my Don't tweets. I'm here Stafford for must oh, win a Super tweets. Bowl. Period. Yeah, that, period. Again, that yeah. has nothing to do with the Detroit Lions. Yeah, the, it, he has proven in one season away from Detroit that they failed to put around. The front office, head coach, and roster needed to yeah. go and compete for divisions and Super Bowls. Yeah, that's that is, fair. Yeah. But you're also treating Stafford. I'm starting to look at Stafford slappies kind of like I looked at LeBron slappies when he left Cleveland. Oh, like, God. yeah, you put him on a super team, he wins a championship. Congratulations. But you know what? What's Patrick you Mahomes put, on? You put 90% of the quarterbacks in that really? position. Really? You put Jared Goff on that team yesterday. Do they he win? won a playoff game last Do they year win with, the game with against the worst Tam- team he Does won a Jared playoff. Goff win the game against Tampa Bay yesterday? Potentially. Oh, Does Oh, wow. does, does he blow a 27 to 3 lead? He blew it. Matthew Stafford blew the lead. Really? If you're you're going to give him credit for the morning. win. You got to give him you're credit gonna, for that, too. How? He fumbled you the ball four you times. Can't cherry pick. Did he fumble the ball four times? I'm asking. No, he did, did he, not fumble. Did he kick was the, field he the quarterback goal of, of the team that blew yards? a 27 to 3 no, lead? No, you can't say that. You can't yes, say you can, he blew it. Because if you're going to say he's the quarterback of the winning team, no. you got to point out he was the quarterback of the team that blew the lead. Not only is he the quarterback of the winning team, he led them down with under 30 seconds. 60 How does Cooper Cup get open twice like that? Wow. Huh? How does Cooper Cup get I open twice like that? Come on. Oh, and now we're going to – I know. We're just going to find ways to take – No, no, no. Yeah, that, this that's, is why I'm not even going to deal – That's a football conversation, you have an man. How does Cooper Cup You get have an opportunity open? to take to, – look, Stick. You have an opportunity this morning to come in here yep. and just – just say, admit you were wrong about Matthew Stafford this whole season. What Mr. Pick wrong Six about? himself. He hasn't you're, done you're what he gonna, needs to do yet to prove me wrong. He, hasn't. he needs back to win in a NFC Super Bowl. Title game. He needs to win a Super Bowl. If he doesn't do that, this whole operation yeah, like was a failure a for the Rams. This is why I, I, like, agree. I can't deal with you guys. You think the Rams traded what yeah. they did just to get to an NFC Championship game? The, or yeah. to that's win the, the Super Bowl? Points. I think you both are, are right. No, I mean, he's right, but you're also right from the Detroit Lions perspective. It's like two different... From the Rams, they have to win the Super that's Bowl. That's why I said, man, you're on second no, base. You're so Good lazy. job. You're but so to throw lazy. on sunglasses and a vest and throw your feet up yeah. like you actually nailed the chick from high school last night, you didn't. Mm-hmm. You didn't. Well, you brushed up against her boob. Congrats. Yeah. Stick, <laughs> no. Look, I know you're writing this out because you can't admit you were wrong. Just like you couldn't admit you were wrong no, about the Steelers. No, it's because it's not over until the Super Bowl. I know Bowl. it's not over. It's never if you over. It, was, Bowl, it could have been over last up. week, but now it's not. No, no, it no. should have been over this week, but it's no, not. No, I'll show you the tweets. You can go check the tweets. I said, Stafford. Dude, you don't want me to go through your timeline. Even like a month and a half half ago, I think I was sitting in that very chair and said, Matthew Stafford, you have no excuses now. It's on our TikTok. You can yep. go look at it. I do remember that. Because <laughs> they have handed him okay, every Adam? single weapon that they needed to, and honestly, he should win. If he doesn't, you don't get credit for things you're supposed this to do. This is so sad. <clears throat> I'm choking right now. I know you're choking. <laughs> bringing, the, bringing the heat. Ugh. Facts. Logic. Down the throat. <clears throat> choking. Yeah, no. I shit can't breathe on <laughs> that turtleneck baby no uh it's ever since there. i got covid by the way random appearances i can't breathe suddenly oh boy sorry uh, to get you excited buddy yeah no uh look <laughs> uh, I'm, not great gonna, I'm not even gonna he's doing honestly great. It, yeah. it hurts me but he's halfway there it hurts me that you can actually sit there and like dude it's as simple as this just admit you didn't think that he could deliver from day one, you said it. From no, day didn't. one, you said no, it. No, I didn't. You did. I you expected said his... him to win no, no, no. at least a you, playoff you game. They did last year. Let me finish. 
you disregarded his play his whole re regular season by saying he has to deliver in the playoffs. And where me and you can agree, where me and you can agree, is that Stafford had the opportunity in LA, which Detroit never gave him, to change the narrative, which yep. he already has. Which he already has. He's still now, given your the expectation, he needs to win a Super Bowl. He, he hasn't in your mind. That's fine. I'm not even going to go you, into your mind. That's not my expectation. That has to be everybody in LA. You don't give up. Two I would number die one for those expectations in Detroit. For and a this guy is a Detroit there. sports show, and we're we're tying it back to Detroit, and that has always been the point: is that Detroit never gave us the stick. We know that, and that is the point to this day, yeah. which is why I'm up here this morning, which is why I talked about Sheila, Martha, the whole Ford family. You got the California That roots. has always been the point stick. Yeah, but That's, when you're up here you know, bragging you know what funny Stafford's stick, accomplishing, it's like, no, stick, the you know Rams what's funny? are accomplishing you know this what's funny? With if Stafford. Stafford wins this weekend, hypothetically, he doesn't, let's say he doesn't even... He should win this let's weekend. Talk, oh, Getting San Francisco even though they're 0-2 with... against the Niners this year, but yeah, I got but it. Should, Anyways. Two home games get to the oh, know, Super Bowl, know, that's amazing. Hear me out. Oh, but he won, goes on the road against the GOAT. But we're, we're no. gonna, we're gonna, I'm giving him his flowers for that. It's just not enough, man. It's never enough. No, the Super Bowl is the point. If Matthew Stafford wins on Sunday, like you say, he should. Why is your standards lower than the Rams? If he wins, he has the same amount of NFC title wins as Aaron Rodgers. What does that say? That says a lot. It says uh, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. But Aaron Rodgers is a top 10 quarterback of all time. Is he, though, now? Oh, come on. Is he, though, now? Come on. See, this is what I mean. I don't get people... I can't what do this. can't new information change your it's opinion? It's not new like, information. He, the, he, he the blew thing, it again. Just at like home. with Peyton Manning, he always failed, quote unquote, even though he had a winning record against Tom Brady in the postseason. You he can never admit, deliver in the postseason. Rodgers hasn't lived up to what he should have been. I can I can agree with that. Yeah. But he's a top ten quarterback of all time. Yeah, but yeah. And if you I want mean, to put him in the top five, I think that's a bit much. But hey, you know what? I think he's better than Breeze. I think he's better than some of those guys, at least in his era for sure. I don't put him above Montana, Brady. Manning, uh, Elway, um, I put him above Steve yeah. Young. Just the so, winning aspect of it is he's the top five, top six quarterback. But that's beyond the well, point. My look, whole point to this whole Matthew Stafford look, thing. You know, you're no, right. The Lions fair, did though. not surround him with what they needed to. I will, that's always I will been say the point, and that, that that's a fair point. But Stafford isn't exactly the guy that can overcome those things. Can he I ask needs you something? Everything to okay, be perfect. Agreed. That's not true. That's not true. Nothing was perfect about yesterday. His what? team crumbled in front of him. Their defense and then is unreal. They held Tom Brady scoring <laughs> they blew over a 27 to three lead. in every playoff game okay, with the Tampa Bay to three Everything points. needs to be perfect. His team blew a 27 to three lead. Four fumbles, a short field goal. And then he comes out and bills them on the last play, yeah. or excuse me, the last drive of the game. I keep choking. God damn it. He, he bails him out. Was yesterday perfect? Was yesterday perfect? No, it wasn't. He played perfect. Matthew Stafford played perfect. Oh, and he no. carried that team to victory yesterday. If you can't admit it, it's really hard for me it, to actually was, sit up here and no, try no, to have a conversation with you. It was a nice you. win for him. To it's say not he a nice win. It's team. a huge win. He just beat Tom Brady on the road. And that's Tom great. Brady was 14-2 and two prior to yesterday's game but in the division round. But they let up a 27-3 lead, man. You can't because just, of Matthew you can't just Stafford. ignore that. They had the lead they because of Stafford. They did it. Yeah. Come on, man. Oh, it's unbelievable. But, but that's great. But it has, is he halfway there, or has he accomplished what L.A. brought him there for? Oh, my goodness. You know what L.A. hasn't done since Jared Goff declined for those three years? They haven't gotten to a title game. And now they're already back there year one with Stafford. Yeah, they won one last year. So he's won one more playoff game this year than Goff did in that uniform last year. He has more year. touchdown Congrats. passes in two games than Jared Goff his entire playoff career. I don't care. I care about wins. Yeah, you. Oh, now it's a oh my Yes, God. it's always about winning. Oh. Always. You can, you can take that off the table. You know, Jared, with me, you it's always funny? about winning. You know what's funny to me? Jared Goff actually only has two playoff wins because the war for a war for it actually got the playoff win last year so you know yeah uh, and golf came in with one thumb and ended up yep, winning the game yep and then yeah. he played the next week and they got embarrassed and he played absolutely pathetic and that's why they traded him because he's an average quarterback he's not great and look what happens when the rams so, have a great but quarterback. here's to my argument you're saying so with that team with an average quarterback you're at least getting one playoff win right no that's no so yeah, now Yes, okay, but you you're not understanding year. the point, Stick, and you keep going around it because you just can't admit you were wrong about Stafford being able to live Until the Super Bowl you happens, you won't know if I'm right or wrong. Huh? Until the Super Bowl happens, we won't know if That's I'm right or so wrong. That's so wrong, and you know what? I'll leave it there because we got to go to break, but dude, I'm, I'm so sorry you think the way you do. You and every Matthew Stafford sorry, critic out there. Sorry, the bar's so low for Maddie. It's not a, it's not a low oh, bar. Maddie. It's pathetic. Maddie was good here, so it's he won pathetic. two games. You can troll me all you want. You he can troll me all you want. He made it to a championship. Today, He's the best. Today, Put on my sunglasses. Today, Stick, you got to call him Matthew. Remember, he doesn't like Maddie. Oh, yeah. Today, sorry. Today, all of you can just be quiet. You're beneath me today. We got to go to break. When we get back, it's mailbag time. Guys, the number is in the chat if you want to call in. Get your questions ready. Looking forward to it after the break. Thank you so much. Stick, thank you so much for coming in, baby. We'll talk to you guys after, it, the, after the break. Everything that we've hoped for, finally. He's going deep.
Right side. Right side. Oh, that is Edwards out there. He goes up in the air at the goal line. Hey, it's Brandon Edwards here wanting to welcome the Sports Marketing Agency to Woolworth Sports Network to the family. Glad to have you guys. For the last decade, the Sports Marketing Agency has literally leveraged athletes around issues such as mental health and substance abuse. Woodward Sports. Miss part of the show today? Watch again on YouTube or download the podcast anywhere you listen to podcasts. I'm the talent. America! Unbelievable! Good morning. Good morning, America. Good morning, Detroit. We got 10 minutes. We do. And I'm going to allow you to ask any question you have this Drop morning. Drop the questions. Drop any question in the chat you'd like. I'm all for it today. Nobody can ruin my vibe. Not even idiots like Stick. Not even people who can't even admit they're wrong like Stick, like Easy. Hey, I Easy's going to deflect. Well, I said they would uh, dog walk the, uh, the, 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 the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, even though I said Matthew Stafford. Let's see him throw 17 times now against he talks. Uh, Easy, you saw Matthew Stafford throw, than, uh, throw more than 17 times. How'd it turn out, buddy? What, because you predicted the game right? That changes what you've said all season on Stafford? Do me a favor. Go back and check your tweets all season on Stafford. Don't sit up here and try to act. Just admit you guys were wrong, and we can move on. I won't even... I, I don't even want to call you out. I didn't even call you guys out. How dare you come into my chat and talk crap as if you were right? None of you were right. You were wrong. Admit it and move on. The fact that you can't admit you were wrong. That's the key says everything about you just like you guys couldn't admit when you were wrong about the Steelers last year you're doing it with Stafford this year and even if he wins the Super Bowl you're gonna tell me that he has a stacked roster Jenna I'm so glad you're enjoying the show why does the ceiling I love this point from Mark why does the ceiling keep getting higher oh my goodness it's it's so funny for people oh goodness Oh, goodness. Kennedy's in the chat. Did you guys already talk about the stupid OT rules? Yes, we did, Kennedy. Those OT I hope rules. Montana is treating you well. Love you to bits. Whew. Let's get some questions. <laughs> he said, Do you think the playoff results are an indictment of NFL scheduling? I'm not sure what you mean by that, Doug. Yeah. What does yeah. that mean? I I'm not sure. I'm not following you here, Doug. So please rephrase it. Rephrase it in the... Uh, Excuse easy, me. easy said he's on the line. Nah, I don't feel like taking easy. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna give these guys attention. No. <laughs> Stick walked in here. He barged in here. It's the only reason why. I'm not acknowledging if unless he's calling in to apologize, which he isn't, because he won't admit he was wrong. Huh? Unless he wants to admit he was wrong, he's not gonna get on. So no, I'm not taking the call. So here we are. I don't want to take the L, buddy. Believe me, you're the only one taking L's this morning and all season. Adam, you were wrong. You lost damn near every bet you placed on Friday. Really? I went three of four. I had the Bengals winning, the Niners covering, the Bills winning, and the Rams winning. So, uh, what, who's, what is your name? Excuse Do you want him on, Adam? Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. Three of four. How about my bets this weekend? Hmm? I'll give you my Chase account. Here. I'm not gonna answer. I'm not gonna acknowledge people that won't admit they're wrong. If I can admit I'm wrong, so can you. I'm not gonna sit here and entertain losers who can't admit they are wrong, who think they know more than everybody, and even when they're wrong, they won't admit it. Does Stafford get to the playoffs with the Bengals roster? Yeah, I think they do. Absolutely. Ring Bengals are very good defensively. They went heavy in all defense in the free agency. And they're loaded with weapons on the uh, offensive front. Absolutely they do. Steve R in the chat. Adam, great show. And Jeff, that was so worth the wait. I'm glad you guys enjoyed. Oh, goodness. That's why. Uh, let's see. Justin from North Carolina. Then why, Adam, if Justin Verlander did any less than what he did for Houston Astros after being traded, would Verlander have been a bust? No, because Ther Verlander was an MVP, Cy Young winner, took the Tigers to a World Series, multiple closeout game wins, shutouts in the playoffs, ALCS clutch game, uh, clutch pitching performances. Like, it's not even close. Funky Adam, bud, you walled out today. You're absolutely right, and I have every reason to do. I have every reason to. I really hope all of you... Oh, here we go. I, we got, I love these people. Do we have any questions? Do we have any Do questions? Do you want easy? Come he on, is... why did Sue attack Stafford? 
because allegedly Stafford kicked him. It wasn't really a kick. I mean, he landed on his leg. Stafford didn't kick out. I, and Sue is not one to talk. Not want to talk about kicking. Sue is not one to talk about kicking. He isn't. I'm sorry. Yeah. And then you go and tell Stafford you're gonna f him up. Oh boy, did he f you up the rest of that game? <laughs> Oh, did Stafford F you up, Sue, for the end of the game? Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. That was amazing. Adam, could the game have went any better for the Stafford doubters? They have zero ammo today. No, they don't. They, they, oh, my, easy, easy. Don't, don't try this stuff with me, man. Why am I scared? Do, do yourself a favor. You're wrong. If you admit it in the chat, I'll answer the call. If you won't admit you were wrong, I'm not even going to entertain you or stick today. Doesn't hurt. Just stop. Just admit you're wrong and move <laughs> on. People, people will respect you more as somebody who talks about sports if you just admit when you're wrong. If I can admit I was wrong about Penesu playing at right tackle, then you can admit you were wrong about Matthew Stafford. Just huh. stop it, easy. Just that stop it. Hurt. And stop changing the goalposts. You guys are pathetic. I think... Either tomorrow, one of these days, he's got to call in. We got to, we got to no, hash it no, out. He's no. in. He's I, on. I, I, right. I am not going to hash it out. He's no. on right now. I'm not accepting he's on any right loser now. who's not willing. Jeff, if you want to put your headphones on, you want to put wrong. him through. Easy, you, a fish. I will fire you if you answer that call. All right, we're putting easy on. Hang it up. <clears throat> Hang it up. Fish, I will fire you. Hang it up right he's, now. He's not being serious. Jeff? I'm being dead serious. Well, you don't have headphones on, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, right. not right. It's pointless, Fish, because I'm just going to be talking to him. Adam won't be able to hear him. So oh, that's, baby. Yeah. Well, we got we to oh, have him on, Oh, baby. Though. We got four minutes. Guys, get your, get your questions in. I'm enjoying this too much. Just admit your guys are wrong. I don't understand why it's so hard. Yeah. I think, and I had this discussion with Easy. That's why I'm so intrigued to talk to him, because there's a part of him that, and he admittedly told me this, and I agree with him. There's times where, and we admitted this, Stafford isn't perfect. There's, there's definitely some fault you can, you can put on Stafford's shoulders, but the overall point of it is, and I agree with Adam in this, and we've been hammering this on Twitter if you follow us, both of our names, if you want to follow us on Twitter, it's been about the organization more than it has about Stafford. And I get easy, don't forget about the times, it's, it's not all on the organization, but to me it is. Like, if you had to give I'm a not share, acknowledging losers who yeah. think they know everything and just won't admit they're wrong. Well, <laughs> Sorry. It's not going to happen. I agree Congrats with on acting like Stafford won his ninth Super Bowl. Lo laughing my ass off. Low expectations are hilarious. TP, I don't even know who you are. Just get it out of there. Just, just get out of the chat, dude. You're, just stop. Just stop it. Question. Adam, will you debate Neil? He wants the Lions to lose. Neil always <clears> wants <throat> the Lions to lose yeah. for the draft pick. I'm not even going to debate Neil on that. Yeah, that's to not be really honest, a... I'm starting to lose my voice. I've had too much fun today. I don't even know if I can do it. i got to get ready for tomorrow. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> Oh my goodness. None of, I'm not going to give any of you that won't admit you're wrong the platform to even discuss Matthew Stafford this morning. Well, I, I think None of you deserve it. None uh, of you deserve it. None of you. I, I think some people deserve to be, ha, let them be explained a little bit. No. Because I think you don't want to no. create a false narrative. No, way. go yeah. look at the Twitter accounts. Go look. Look, the, I, don't make me go grab receipt, receipts. Please, I don't want to have <laughs> to do this. Please stop. Please stop. Just stop the nonsense. Stick and easy. Enjoy your day. I hope you enjoyed the show just like everybody else. Everybody, thank you for tuning in this morning. I had a blast with all of you. I hope you enjoyed the vodka, the rosé, the cigars. If you'll excuse me, I'm going to go to the back and light another cigar. And I'm going to put my feet up the entire day. And I'm not going to apologize to anybody. It's a beautiful day to be me. That's all I'm going to say. It's a beautiful day to be me it really is it really is listen i'm not gonna stoop to any of your levels all of you can talk take all the personal shots you can say all the personal stuff all the petty stuff you can do that that's fine you can resort to what you have to because you know you're wrong and i'm right and at the end of the day you can't accept it is that terry foster is that terry terry yes it is terry. oh no terry i love you Man, Terry. How you doing, buddy? Pretty good. I love you, man. Thank I, you. I don't think we have time. We yeah, have a minute, Terry. A minute. I just want to tell you. Can we get Terry on camera? I, Terry, I, I, I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, I love you. I really yeah, do. We love you. I just want to share my love with you this Love morning. you, too, yeah. and I love the socks. Thank you, man. Did you notice the polka dots on there? There aren't any. I, I didn't know what design that was. I, I thought they were lion hearts. <laughs> oh, no, no. Not even oh, close. Not, not this morning. Not this morning, Terry. Oh, goodness. I love it. Oh, it was a great show today. Guys, yeah. 
Terry, thank you. You're a little bit cocky today, but that's okay. <laughs> I think I have every right to. You do. And, you know, <laughs> Terry, I think we should I, – I need you to back me on this. I think people take people who talk about sports, you know, in the business we're in. Mm -hmm. I can't respect somebody who can't admit they were wrong. It's hard for me to listen to them. And when uh... people don't admit they're wrong, it's, it really, it, it's really tough for me to sit there and acknowledge them. You know, that, that's true. People can't admit, or they do this. I never said that. Exactly. Right. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> right. Or they change the goalposts. I, right. I think it's, it's really unprofessional. But anyways, we got to go. It's 10 o'clock. Everybody, thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed all this. Hell, I may do it again tomorrow. I'm feeling one. <laughs> Have a great day. Have a great Monday, Detroit. Sheila, Martha, <laughs> deuces. <laughs>